Hello, listening people. Hello. You are listening to Spin Polish Presents Unappreciated Masterpieces. I'm Ryan Slowinski. And I'm Bartek. Again, with no last name. K. K? You're Mr. K. Mm-hmm. Bartek? Okay. So no, that's my brother. <laughs> yeah. So. Your brother has a different last name? Yeah. No, his initials are okay. Oh, I see. As in, he is not okay, because he's related to Bartek, who is a host on Spit and Polish, which you are listening to. Why are we called Spit and Polish? Well, that's a good question. Bartek, why are we called Spit and Polish? Do I answer the one where you said my name, or the one where you didn't say my name? Uh, Bartek, why are we called Spit and Polish? Okay, that one. Um, we are called Spit and Polish because we, you know, we thought about it and we said, that's a good name. Now, why did we think that was a good name? <laughs> that, that's the next question I'm going to answer. Because, I, you know, I answered that one too literally. I think I missed the point of why you asked it. <laughs> the reason why we're called Spit and Polish is because we are always spitting and we're both Polish. It, it's like a little play on that whole phrase of, you know, uh, to make something better, you give it a shine. So you spit on it, you polish it, you know, spit polish. But also because, you know, we're both Polish. And, you know, we don't really do this, but we just joke, oh, we're always spitting. There you go. See, there's an answer. Fourteen of them, but there was, there was one Pick in your there. Favorite. So, pick a favorite answer. Uh, vote, vote in on the comments below. So, why are we on Appreciate Masterpieces? We are on Appreciate, we're doing Unappreciated Masterpieces because there is such thing as an Unappreciated Masterpiece in okay. the world of film and entertainment. There's ones in art, there's one in music, and I'm sure there's other podcasts that, that delve into that, but we are the one that delve into an Unappreciated Masterpiece in the terms of cinema. We find movies that aren't completely unknown, but that aren't completely known at the same time. Ones that you go, yeah, I may have heard of that, or ones that you may have never heard of, but there's one thing in common. They have not got enough love. They have not got enough love from the audience. The filmmakers, the writers, the actors in each and every one of the films that we have covered put love and effort and dedication into the piece, but us, the general masses, the audience, have not picked up the work that they've created and given it love and care. We are here to do feature-length audio commentaries on movies that deserve to have commentaries. Mm-hmm. And Bartek, mm-hmm. what is the unappreciated masterpiece that we are going to delve into this episode? The unappreciated masterpieces that we are doing on this episode are Chłopcem z Sąsiedztwa. God, uh, could you repeat that again? The unappreciated masterpiece that we are doing in this episode are Chłopcem Sąsiedztwa. I think I fucked that up again. For you, Sąsiedztwa. No. I think Bartek can't speak Polish in this episode, which is very worrying to me, so I guess... At least this time it's a pronunciation. I, I think, I guess, our guest can speak Polish. Um, our guest is, of course, Grace Brown, the legendary commentator on the previous episodes, Bend It Like Beckham, and who could ever forget the amazing film Sorority Boys. Grace Brown, welcome. What's the, uh, what's the movie we're watching? It's the one at the bottom. <laughs> I'm not even. Why would you? Um, it's the boy next door. <laughs> the boy next door. That is the perfect wait, Polish wait, pronunciation. Holy actually. crap! I speak Polish now. <laughs> oh, wouldn't it be great if we got into Topsy Turvy world where we're just fluently speaking Polish now, but we think we're speaking English, and then there's people who actually speak English sitting here going, "I don't know what's happening now." <laughs> so we're doing the 2015 cinematic classic, "The Boy yeah. Next Door." 2015. That was yesterday. 2015 was such a such a short time ago. Yet it feels we started this show so far. Oh yes, we started this show in 2015 on on the 18th of October. The first episode was published. So by the time that this episode is published, it will be the, the, the same date, if not just around. Choose so, a, yeah, choose a happy day. birthday, Spin Polish. Woo, Grace, you have the honor of being here. I'm chuffed. 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 Talking about being chuffed, oh God. You, guys, <laughs> you guys should be majorly chuffed to be joining us for this great piece of work. Now, I hope that you guys have a legal copy of the 2015 cinematic classic, The Boy Next Door, starring J-Lo and others. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the only other name I remember is like Ryan Guzman or something. Uh, Christian Chenoweth, please. Mm-hmm. 
the dude from Sex in the City, Aiden. Also, my big fat Greek wedding. Oh, good. Mm. Uh, Grace knows. There's also a dude who is in Scrubs in there, and I went, oh, Keith. The, oh, that was the janitor for a second. <laughs> I, I, think, I could only wish if Neil Flynn was in this, I would probably have enjoyed it. If you really it. want to see Neil Flynn in an unappreciated masterpiece, check out Baby's Day Out, in which he is a policeman that sees Fat Tony from The Simpsons with fire in his pants, literally, and does nothing. <laughs> That's that was that's a good episode. But we're getting a sidetrack. Get your copy of The Boy Next Door, the erotic thriller, because that's right. This yep. is October, and we're doing films of a darker nature, films that border on horror, thriller, or the supernatural, films that explore the darkness of man. And boy, does this explore the darkness of man. So get it together, people. Get your copy because we're going to start in three, two, two one. one. Clay. Did you say Glay? Or Clay? Or Play? I said Play, right? I don't know. I think you said Glay. I actually did say Glay, but don't tell Ryan. Okay. <laughs> I'll keep it a secret. Secret. Your secret. <laughs> secret, secret's safe on this podcast. So, we... I think it's easy to say that since this is a newer film, us three don't have... A, a long-term history with it, as we do on previous episodes with such movies like Sorority Boys and Bend It Like Beckham and all that, where where these films have picked up a, a lot of following over time. This one is really recent, really, yeah. really new. So it hasn't uh, got that kind of weight behind it that the most of our unappreciated ones do, which is the weight of time. Yeah, this one's basically been put in the unappreciated pile pretty early. Yeah, it, from well, Claire is panting. In case you needed to know, well, no, it's called it's called wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So the movie starts halfway through the movie. Um, a bold choice. A bold choice. It's a flashback of another movie. I think if you said to me, "The Boy Next Door" is a part of a trilogy called the J Lo Thriller trilogy. I would believe you, because J-Lo is an actress... Uh, no, Grace, you were saying to us... Before, boob sweat, by the way. Uh, Grace, if you, you were saying to us before we started the podcast that you did not know that this was from 2015. No, because... J-Lo's like, just so damn hot? That, well, yes. But also, <laughs> like, it reads like a 2003 movie. Probably because all the erotic thrillers I've ever watched have been from around 2003. Yeah, Daredevil, but, my favourite erotic oh, thriller. The best erotic th- thriller of all time, to be honest. Um, and also, I feel like I haven't, like, known that J-Lo's been in a movie for, a, for for the last five or six years. Can I bring up a big secret with you, guys? Now, you may laugh. I'm definitely going to recommend <laughs> it. Um, I do not remember what J-Lo stands for, because I only know her as J-Lo. <laughs> that, is, that is wrong. What, Jennifer Lopez? <laughs> oh, thank God. I thought it was Jennifer. I was really. <laughs> well, I, mean, I said Jennifer Lopez earlier. But that doesn't mean I remembered. Oh yeah, uh, you, you don't listen to me anyway. So who are you? Uh, <laughs> How did you get in here? Get out of here! So I always know her as J Lo, which I think is appropriate. I think she should legally change it to J Lo. Uh, but Ryan, look, she's just computers. Jane. The first I of many. It in a sheet. Oh, I was going to make it. You going to say something I was, witty? I was going to make a Jennifer Lopez joke. But... Who's Jennifer Lopez? <laughs> It's Jenny from the block. Oh, J Lo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. When when like I was watching this, the first five seconds, I'm like, am I watching a terrible, terrible dub? No, it's just the movie. I thought the same thing. I'm like, some of these lines are the room worthy. <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. The and readings. That, I mean. Okay, so, so what they mean by that is, uh, you know, to give the movie credit, it does give you that feeling of those. It's good, bad at the start. To give you that sense of insecurity for what's about to come, it gives you this hokey kind of uh, uh, saved by the bell for Bartek uh, and uh, uh, Fuller House kind of thing, where it's like, oh, everything's kind of, you know, that 90s fun, 80s, 90s fun, upbeat, like, quirky drama, you know, stuff. And then when it gets into the sex, everything changes, as it always does when sex happens in horror movies. I'm glad horror you and er- horror erotic thrillers. Did uh, here's a big question: Did the boy next door erotically thrill you? Good God, no! Wait, Grace, let me ask again: <laughs> Did it erotically thrill you when 
the best erotic thriller scene ever happened. It's probably not thrilling, but more erotic, which is <laughs> to skip <laughs> to skip forward. When J Lo and um what was the young man's name? Noah. Noah. Noah's Ark. Um <laughs> with Russell Crowe. Um when Russell Crowe's character Noah in this <laughs> um when he uh, is having a tender, it has a damaged relationship with her, and he sleeps with the son's like girl. Oh, the hottest girl in school. The hottest girl in school. He's like completely naked, getting a blowjob, and all he does is just look at Jennifer Lopez with a smug look as she closes the windows. Were you not getting a raging hard on from that? I can honestly say that no, I was not. I, uh, I kind of went, why, why, why this, why now, why, why, why not, why not right from the beginning, you just couldn't wait 25 minutes in, you really needed it in the opening credits. <laughs> so, this movie is, you know, it's an interesting movie, it's an, it's 90 minutes long, and I think this is up there with a movie we've done on this show called Catch That Kid. That is a fantastic entrance, I'm sorry to interrupt, but he came into the movie Bicep First. (laughs) So you did get erotically, and Stan Lee's in the movie, I'm very glad he could make it. (laughs) I tried Googling to see who that was, because I vaguely recognised him, and I just, I gave up. (laughs) Because you realised Stan Lee is already here. Mm. Superheroes, come on, so... (laughs) Well, what I was about to say is this is 90 minutes. It reminds me of the film we've done on the show, Catch That Kid, in which the pacing is incredibly well done in this movie, in which, you know, 20 minutes in, I felt like, whoa, we're near the end of the movie already. Like, this has been a ball. But no, we hadn't yet to even begin. Like, whoa. And by the time the movie ended, I was like, wait, that was 90 minutes? I felt like I was here for like a minute and a half, (laughs) not an hour and a half. Is there something wrong with the the copy? I and I literally thought, is there something wrong with the copy I have? I, I this feels like way too enjoyably quick. I thought it was going to be like a slower burn, but that's where the boy next door gets you. Well, you see, the th- you're wrong. There is something wrong with your copy. It's that it has this film on it. You're not a fan. No, not particularly no. But we're doing this as an unappreciated masterpiece, so you're coming in as the critical one here. Bartek I feel and I, like that is usually my role. Bartek, well, you loved Bend It Like Beckham. I love I, Bend It Like Beckham. I think Grace has a problem with the fact that your subtitles no. don't have capital E. Excuse me, could you just yeah, stop and just say that? Grace has a problem? And we could just end it there. Oh, why not? I'm upgraded. What? <laughs> yeah, good. She's just upgraded. So this was one of my favourite scenes in the movie. Actually, in which Noah and uh, and um, the son are bonding, and it feels like they've known each other for ten years, but they've I literally know. known each other for ten minutes. Mm-hmm. At this point, if the Noah character asked him, "Can I see your dick?" he would say yes and whip it out. Like there's no <laughs> there's no ifs and or buts. I feel like about if this. Noah asked most people in this movie, they would say yes. Yeah, would be... you? <laughs> no. Show him your dick. No, it's locked away. They be... in a drawer. Yes, yeah. and they'd probably be really interested. In Noah's him. house of all places. <laughs> hey, no, he can see it anytime he wanted. He just he asks. He's very polite, but yeah. I still say no. He's yeah. in the Step Up movies, apparently. Which uh, one? There are like twenty. He's in the one with Step Up in the title. Does he step up to the streets? I really hope... I can't remember which Step Up movie it is, but there's a Step Up movie... I, I kid you not, Bartek. There's a Step Up movie where one of the characters has those cars that bounce. You know, the bouncy, bouncy uh, yeah, cars. Yeah. Hydraulic, yeah. Hydraulics. Hydraulics. Have you seen any of the Step Up movies? No, but I played San Andreas. Right, so it has the, the hydraulics. And this guy's, like, cruising around, and then near the end... Spoiler alert for one of the Step Up movies. He gets, like, shot... And he, get, and he gets shot, and he's like, ah, and he's, like, dying, and he's just, like, put his foot on the accelerator, and his car's just going boom, 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 and he, like, crashes, and he's dying, but this thing's still bouncing up and down, and they're having, like, a dramatic it's death scene. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. It's Ed Sheeran. No, it isn't. Yeah, Ed Sheeran appears in this movie. No, it isn't. It's so Forrest. Is. <laughs> That's his name, isn't it? What is that? It's an EpiPen. They, they... In, in a camo print for boys. He's a boy. That dude just stole stuff off the counter. I didn't notice that first time around. <laughs> See, this is why the movie is really ingenious. The mise-en-scene in the film is great. Look at Noah. He's in He's in the background of this image, kind of like a haunting presence, kind of foreshadowing things to come in that shot. You know, like, he's over the sun's shoulder, like like the devil, you know? And, oh, and, the devil. And here, again, look. 
ladder. He's 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 sitting on a ladder. You know, there's so much visual, you know, stuff that you can get from this. The metaphors, the 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 brilliant brilliant imagery that this is. J Lo is pointing to her face. Mm-hmm. What a beautiful image her face is. That uh, she's like over forty five, I think. Yeah, my yeah, my parents' age, basically. Yeah, and you know, is J Lo your mum? No. Isn't J Lo everybody's mum? Oh no, that means that everyone has the same parents as established <laughs> yeah. on this show now. Steve Tyler is everybody's dad, no, and geez. J-Lo is everybody's mum. What a wicked what a wicked couple they would make. Uh, again, I'm not much into J-Lo, but I imagine she's like... she's. I don't know, I'm not good at j I'm not good at impersonations, but I imagine J-Lo... Please don't, thank you. <laughs> I imagine, Spare me. I you imagine, can do the South Park one. I imagine J-Lo <laughs> would just walk up and be like... Be like Steve Tyler, and then Steve. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. She was like that in this movie, though. No. Yes, she was. Okay. When Noah would like pick it on her, she's like doing the teacher voice, where she's like, well, "She's a teacher." Noah. Noah. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you said she's a teacher because I was chatting with Rachel last night, and uh, she doesn't really show many teacher qualities. Excuse me. Do we not love our teachers dressed like this casually? I don't know what that is. It's what we call a sheet. (laughs) She's a tapered sheet. What we call tissues. Like, where do you buy that? Kmart. (laughs) You buy buy tissues. No, maybe Target. I think it's a bit like a a smidge too high class. But can I can I just uh, say something? Did we expect Stan Lee to live in this movie? I expect. I thought he was dead halfway through. I I thought about him, and then they're like, "Oh yeah." We don't see him again until that like that one scene where he's like, "What are you doing in my house?" Where he's like, "Mrs." Last Mist- name. Mr. Stank, and- get out of my house. <laughs> was it Anderson, the last name? Uh, I think so. Yeah, Claire. Considering it's written in graffiti in one Claire, scene, I should remember it. Claire, Claire, This movie gives several hints of nip throughout. Both but not both enough. male and female. Oh, you not see, enough, you see his nip at one point. You see you his just dick. Saw his you nip. see his dick at one point, so I Do think you? we should be happy Do enough. You? I thought we did. I did. Well, apparently you This did. is the nip scene, by the way. I guess mm. my copy's the dick copy. <laughs> <laughs> the dick cut. They spice cold. like a still yeah. frame. <laughs> the, the dick cut. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the boy next door. Uh, the boy next door. Circumcision. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the next shot. There's a dick, I see it. There we go. <laughs> there, there it is. It is. That is slut. two hints so, of nipple in one minute. And not enough sweaty biceps for for Grace, you know? So that was your favourite introduction. You know, there's... I'm very much into with films, you know, and this is one Grace pointed out. I'm very much into character introductions, you know? They can really be essential to a film, you know? Like, Casablanca, you meet Rick, he's playing chess against himself. It, it sets up... Yeah. It sets... Rick? Rick. Is it Rick or Brick? Rick. Rick? It's not Rick. Rick with an R. I apologize, Rick. Get the fuck out of here. (laughs) No, it's Glay. (laughs) (laughs) It's Rick. Playing chess against himself. And then you have a similar thing with Kurt Russell in The Thing. He's playing chess against a computer. All these... Wait, wait, wait. Isn't that Bert Russell? (laughs) Yeah, you mean Glurt Russell. My favorite. (laughs) Yeah, my favorite Russell. So... You know, and then... And then, you know, in this movie, you get introduced with just the bicep. It says so much about the characters involved, you know? Mm. It says a lot. a lot. And about the audience, too. Bartek? Yep, that's tell- me! <laughs> okay, Grace, uh, <laughs> could you tell us that's more about your experience watching this movie? What did you know about it? What were you expecting from I, this? I knew shit all, because I like, when you went, hey, come on the podcast, we're going to watch Boy Next Door, I gave it a quick Google and went, yeah, erotic thriller. A di- a di- different from the things we've done before. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, your exact thing was, I said... Would you like to do? Would you like to do the net boy next door? Because I know you're such a J Lo fan, and you just said yes. And then you said, "So have you done erotic thrillers on the show before?" And I'm like, "Kind of no. You're the first. Does Wolf Creek two count? Yeah, Wolf Creek is an erotic thriller. So, so you didn't ex- you didn't know much. You googled it. You went, "Oh, this looks neat." And, um, what was, so you didn't have any expectations, so it didn't defeat any expectations that you had, and didn't reach any, either. Mm. So, how did you feel about the movie? So you're the more negative one on on the fence here. Mm -hmm. What didn't you, what, what is your general feeling of the movie? Tell us, tell us what, what, what about this movie do you like and don't you like on a level? 
Well, within the first five minutes of watching this, I went, there's going to be voyeurism in this movie and there's going to be a lot of it. You don't and like I, voyeurism? I, not that I don't like it, I just observe it when it happens. Get it? Ah, oh, yes, I get it. That's a Bartek star of reference <laughs> joke there. Good job, Bartek. I really like that voyeurism joke from Grace's <laughs> mouth. Uh, you know, fun fact, we don't usually write stuff for the show in terms of gags, but that one was written by Bartek <laughs> last year. It's a year-long joke waiting to happen. So you were saying... Happy anniversary. You were watching voyeurisms, yes. Mm. And I, and also, that kid doesn't look 20, and I kept thinking it was going to, like, veer into different horror movies. Like, am I like, is it going to be end up being, like, orphan where, like, he's not 20, he's actually, like, 45, but can't age beyond 20? <laughs> did you did you like the, the move that they made of establishing that he's of age very early on? Yeah, like, oh, did you like so the fact quickly. that he's still going to high school? Because he's nearly 20. He's not actually 20. Nearly, nearly 20. 20. Which means it's 19. Which means just legal. <laughs> well, m- more, isn't it? 16's concerning age, yeah? Well, isn't it 18? With, with a, 16 for sexual. When it's with a teacher... It's, it's never. It's, yeah, never <laughs> is the age. No, <laughs> unless, you know, you're out of school. Mm. And by your, the time you're nearly 20... Oh, can we talk about the first edition of yeah, the Iliad? Yeah, the brand new first edition. <laughs> of like, the, not a of the book on that's what? like gajillions of years old. Are you going to tell me that this hardcover copy of a first edition <laughs> isn't proper? In the, the trivia... The do you metallic. look at the trivia for this? No. Why In the trivia, that? there's a massive section about the first edition of the Iliad mm-hmm. where it's like, well, basically, if there was a first edition, it was from the year 1000 for a start. It was from like 3000 years ago. Yeah, and it's just like the year 1000. And, and it was passed it, down in the oral tradition. Yeah, and mm. then if it, if, the, if a publisher did have a first edition of the Iliad, since it is a public domain style thing, they actually won't make a big deal about it. Hmm. And it actually would be kind of price like Hence there would be no why he worth. It for a dollar. <laughs> Hence, oh, what is what is her outfits? No, that, that, that's pajamas. Are they like? Are don't they... they call these lingerie? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually lingerie. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying this very much. <laughs> My favorite type of genre, the lin like, genre. We yes. like we like to glare around. So right? we see buttocks here. No, Grace. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Bartex, yeah, yeah. So we see buttocks. Mm-hmm. Bartex. <laughs> okay, we see Bartex buttocks. Hairy like a bear. So, Grace, being the woman here in this movie, like you said, voyeuristic, now, do you appreciate the fact that it not only sexually objectifies the woman, but the man? I appreciate is an interesting word. I, but the thing is, is that this whole movie is centred around, like, the flipping... Well, the I was about to say the flipping of the male gaze, but that is incorrect because the male gaze is also present in this movie. But it's it's more like equal opportunity gaze. Everyone have a look. Gaze or gaze? Both. Equal, equal opportunity gaze. <laughs> <laughs> the boy next door. Equal opportunity gaze. Even though this movie does have a lot of homoerotic undertones... To it because him and the son is freaky. <laughs> Am I right? It's quite odd. The the Lego hair twins, as I like to call them. <laughs> <laughs> They've got such solid hair, both of them. And then the dad is like the floppiest hair of them all. Oh my god, the dad is such a nothing. <laughs> Keith from Scrubs. Sorry, there. Is, is that the one? The one who's an asshole? No, the one who's who's Vicky's boyfriend. The one who's nice and is mentioned every now and then, but we so, only see him this one. So Bartek, I will ask you. a a question. You may speak eventually. Ask me one. Um. <laughs> okay. But Grace. Oh. This okay. movie shows a lot of buttocks. Yes. Of men. Yes. And J Lo. Yes. Not hairy bums though. Not hairy bums. Uh huh. What is your opinion on the buttocks? They were like. Are you a buttocks woman? I actually. Or do. are you the abs woman? Or the pectorials? <laughs> we already know you're a bicep girl, but. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do like a butt. The butts are nice. It, was his butt nice? His butt was nice, but, like, I didn't watch you to go, mm, <laughs> because I never make that noise ever. Did you make hey. a more Yoda sound <laughs> one? <laughs> <laughs> the buttocks it is. It is the buttocks. That's a good line, Yoda. <laughs> it was yeah, right yeah, there in the prequel. character is actually centred around pointing out asses. That's like his all he's written on. Yeah, he's a booty expert. <laughs> he's a Jedi for the booties. You know, finally we brought up Yoda. There was a Chappelle show sketch about uh, the like the Jedi Academy having sex with underage boys, and Yoda was one of the people. Were they nearly twenty though? 
I'd probably not actually. So they're already twenty, is That's... what you're telling me. So oh, Bartek. I guess that could be interpreted. Bartek. J.K. Rowling, Ryan. What about you with this movie? I I, I think before I had told you a bit about the boy next door. I don't think you told me much at all about it. Honestly. Well, okay. So you, well, tell us a bit about your experience with this movie, because I just said to these guys, "We're doing the boy next door." Nice rain, by the way, in the background. Um, during this, during the scene, I actually stopped. I actually stopped and said, "Wait, is that a TV? That's like got like a screensaver or something?" And then I'm like, "Oh no, it's rain. I'm sorry." And now you've even stopped your own question to bring but it up. Tell us your experience. My experience just watching the movie. Your experience about what you were expecting, what you knew of, and just watching, yeah. Well, I knew. Basically, exactly what Gray said, that it was an erotic thriller. Those two words. And obviously, the title had implications of like, oh, okay, the next door, there's going to be a thing between two next door neighbours. Um, and Jennifer Lopez is the main actress. Um, I didn't know everything else, which was the whole, she's a teacher. I, I, honestly, I was actually very surprised to find out that her friend was the vice principal. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing, they play it off as if she's old, Christian Chenoweth. She's literally the year older than J-Lo, <laughs> and he calls her an old cunt. I yeah. know. But go I on. thought he was going to say something much worse than cunt. Like we're, we're Australian. Chunk? You got to remember, we're Australian, though. That's yeah. That's so that's a, a nice, second. That's that, a secondary word. That's to a us. nice word. Yeah, it's it's very bad. So so you were surprised by vice vice principal Chenoweth? Oh, that was just one thing. But I didn't know <laughs> that the the love interest was you know obviously of age, but also going to be a student. Yeah. So, I, so it was going to be a whole student thing. Like when I, when you hear that title, I thought it was just going to be like. Two. I mean, I know it's Jennifer Lopez, but I was thinking like teenagers or something like that. Mm, you know? Jennifer Lopez is a teenager. Look at her. She's spunky. spunky. She's still Jennifer Lopez. Um, and it was around. <laughs> it was around when they were having sex that I was like, Uh-oh. "This isn't Annie." That, what? That was a joke. That was a callback, Ryan. No, but it was around that point that I'm like, "Well, this is certainly a first for our show. This is going to be the first one we're like, uh, maybe." Not safe for work episode, even though we we're did that with over. sorority boys, where there were a lot of tits and sex and that too. Yeah, but we've had episodes with but sex. But this one has this more... was soft core porn. This one was soft core porn sex type. I'm not porn. No, that's 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 that really is... harsh to give Why this movie. Why do you bring me on to the not safe for work episode? Ben and like Beckham was not safe for work <laughs> because there was that a bit Irish where they were having sex at the airport. Oh, yeah, in the car. In the car. Oh yeah, you're right. Better like Beckham is not so, and all and all the lesbianism. Well, so a lot uh, of our guests, <laughs> a lot of our guests are thematic. Oh so like God. we have our friend Stefan. We bring him on for desert based movies. <laughs> <laughs> Luke for you, for talking kangaroo based movies. Luke for animal movies. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah monkey bones, snow monkey. dogs. Scooby Doo. So, I didn't even think of that. This is unfair to say that it's softcore porn. Well, I actually appreciated this scene. Now, obviously, from filmmaking standpoint, but I know a bit about filmmaking. I studied film, so I can know the technical aspects and you know the ratings that they couldn't have full core nudity for for this or would get a higher rating. And most likely, J Lo was not going to do it and all that. Oh yeah, the and, trivia did say that. And yeah. I and she was very uncomfortable. They were very uncomfortable in sex scenes, but. I feel like it isn't softcore porn. I actually feel like this is uh, a mixture of a, a tender love scene with uh, uh, worrying, problematic undertones to it because of, there is this lack of consent to it. It is the perfect balance of securing the audience in both ways into making them watch the scene and not feel completely uncomfortable like not letting them be like this is a rape scene that this is eventually a consensual scene but also that it does have the undertones of this psychosis that this character has towards her that he is dominant and and headstrong and and crazy in the end as we will quickly learn yeah for for part of it you're almost on his not on not his on side, his side, but you understand but you understand where, he's, where he's coming from. But then, as the movie goes on, and much later, you start to you know put more not two and two, but like a million and a million together. Like, oh, okay, there, two there million. Was, in case you wanted to know, there was there's a lot more to him. Like at this point, 
we could say, oh, you know, he was just following his emotions. He was just doing what he was doing. But then later on, we found out that he recorded it. So that means mm. that there was already some premeditated craziness going on. Oh, yeah. And he's, therefore, he's, uh, we're like, okay, th- it's not as pure as he's making it out to See, seem. he is what is known as a psychopath. Psychopath? Yes, my favourite. <laughs> and and she is what well, I like to call an idiot. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Okay, to be honest, be a hundred percent. What's great about these type of movies, Grace? You know, I, even though you may not enjoy this, but these type of movies have their place in cinema. Yeah, and there is this mm-hmm. type of thing in which, with all horror movies, and I know this isn't necessarily a horror movie, but it has the tropes of horror movies. It has gore, it has violence, it has you know Empty these tennis. type of characters. You know, it has young idiots, sex, and then death, and all this, right? What I like about this genre and this style with erotic thrillers is the fact that you can have a character like J-Lo, in which she is smart, Mm -hmm. uh, a strong, independent woman, but she has her faults, and to the point in which she's a a, a smart person, but an idiot at the same time. There was a point in the movie in which I said she did something. I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. She did something that was relatively smart, Oh, it was when her and Christian Chenoweth do the... Oh, the ruse. The ruse. And I'm like, that was actually a legitimately smart move. And then, as I said that, she literally did something incredibly stupid, which we'll get to when it comes. And I'm like, I can't believe I just called this idiot a genius. Hmm. Uh, And I realised, really, the real genius was Christian Chenoweth, who we have not talked about, really. Vice Principal Chenoweth. Did you like her? I think that if you were to... um... If you were to pick someone in this movie who was kind of comic reliefy, it might be her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I think um she was my favorite character. Okay. This movie yeah. is full of lots of characters. You know, usually I like to pick really weird characters to be my favorites, but I'm being serious for my character choice. I'm always serious, but this one is less characters in it. There's not too many, mm. and I really liked her because I felt like um in comparison to the rest of the characters who are really embroiled in this plot, I felt like her and the son were really realistic. I felt like, you know, you could see them in real life. Like, she... I bought her as a teacher, and I bought her as that type of friend that, uh, you know, that women have. I've encountered the Christian Chenoweth type, you know, uh-huh. like, from afar. But, like, the type who's kind of like... She's on your side, but she also has a bitch at you for being single still and and tells you that your husband's slime and all that kind of stuff. Like, that your partner's slime, but also understands why you want to get back together with them. Oh, so, like, the girl's girlfriend. Yeah, the girl's girlfriend. But also the fact that she also is her boss at the same time. Like, she's her superior, and that comes across in their friendship as well, a little bit, which I find really... I find the dynamic between the two characters really great. I included the son in there because I found that... At times he was annoying and petulant, but I found it was appropriate. They they built up the reasonings why, and he was a teenage male character that I don't personally I like I don't personally identify with him. I'm not I I was never like this kid, but I identify with him as a character in terms of I like the kid. I, I get where he's coming from, you know. He's he, like I don't I'd never live this experience myself. But through the writing and the acting, I empathise with him. And that's what you need from characters. You need empathy. You don't need sympathy. You need to at least empathise with them to follow the journey. On a similar note to the idea of realism and also the family, Ryan, you wouldn't have this experience, but I've grown up with divorced parents. So I was really fascinated in this movie about the whole relationship between the three characters, you know, the mother, the father, and the son, all trying to get along and even patching things up and... The way that um, Noah got Kevin to interpret uh, the parents' actions. Like, oh, he's doing all these nice things for you to fix your... To make up for the wrongs he's done and stuff like that. So Yeah, like, it's a it's a, a ruse on a level. Like, yeah. he's, he's being nice so that way he can fuck your mum again. <laughs> yeah. That was actually something said. <laughs> yeah, like, not to say that my experience has been like that at all. Not, not at all, but I just found it... <laughs> very fascinating so i didn't really have a favorite character but something about like the father just you know interested me 
The father. Yeah. What about you, Grace? Did you have a favorite character? Now you may not have enjoyed the film, but there, yeah, there is at least a character that everybody gravitates towards in any film. Was there anyone in this that you enjoyed? I probably have to agree with you on Kristen Chenoweth. Um, I also felt that her performance was the strongest in the movie as well. Yeah, I think you know she's really grounded. Like she really knows the character. Like I felt like she could exist outside of this story. Like, if you had another movie... Like, if I said earlier, I jokingly, flippantly said, if you said this was the J-Lo erotica trilogy and this was the middle one and the first one's a f- marriage falling apart, I would actually like to see that trilogy and I would like to see... And I imagine Christian Chenoweth exists in all of... In, like, in the first two, obviously, in not in the third one. Another. In the third <laughs> one, she... she <laughs> How can the third one be an exorcist movie in which she's possessed by Christian Chenoweth? No. I'd watch that. No, right. It has to be a whimsical mystery film where the ghost of her is like your sidekick. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah no, oh, oh, yeah. No, I was hoping that you were going to say it should be like a supernatural movie in which one of them gets turned into, like, let's say, like a mummy no, or right. something, and she's like. A ghost that tells her how to deal but, with the supernatural mummy. If you do that, who's going to solve the mystery of the minivan? Why do they have that? The like minivan that? mystery. Yeah. The minivan mystery. That mystery was intense. Yeah, we need we need a third movie would solve it. It was, mm. an, it was an unanswered question of what, this movie. What was unanswered about it? Just that it was it a two thousand six like, minivan. It was like it was like something <laughs> along the lines of were the brakes actually tampered with? The answer is yes. <laughs> Yeah, but the detective doesn't know that. Oh, because, oh, that's the moment where I called her an idiot. Ah. Where he's like, is there anything you want to tell me? <laughs> no. And I just went, yes. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> okay. Um, are we fans of this type of... Like, I, I kind of mentioned that I like these kind of movies, like thrillers, horrors, not necessarily erotic thrillers, but just thrillers, these type of, you know, and even these B-grade cheesy kind of ones, because this is a, a B-grade movie, but that doesn't mean it isn't a masterpiece. You know, B-grades can be masterpieces. Not every masterpiece has to be an A-level quality film, as th- we've tried to prove on this show. You know, even C-grade films can be unappreciated masterpieces. But are we into these type of movies that The Boy Next Door is a part of? I'd be down to watch movies like this if given the chance. He's down for it. When when I was younger... I'm up and, for it, too. And <laughs> When I was younger and sleeping, not nearly as regularly, um, I... So would, last year? Yes. I would stay up, like, later, and I had a TV in my room, and whatever was on TV, I would, I would find the best thing, and I'd watch it. And quite often, it was these types of movies. It just happened to be how I ha- um, happened to watch Cabin Fever as well. Ah, so... You mentioned, you know, you, you know, your, 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 so your taste has changed, is what you're saying a bit, or do you still would you still watch those things? No, my taste has changed. So this would have appealed to seventeen year old Grace. Seventeen is a bit old. Um, I didn't know how old you were aiming. I thought high school. Um, I think I was probably around 14. 15. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, no, 50. hang on, hang on. 17 I'm just exactly. trying to remember how old I am. Seven years. You're 14. Oh, well, next year I'll be sleeping badly <laughs> and watching The Boy Next Door. Join me. I also like this principal character. I felt like he was a really understated performance. Like, he was very... Like, he played it very mild-mannered, which is great because you don't want every character to be like, look at me, I'm a character that you have to be... Which sometimes is a fault in some movies. Also, he's wearing a very nice suit for a principal. Like, like a very nice but suit. I think it's a nice school. Do you reckon? I think it is. Also, it looks nice. Also, mm. he really looks a bit like Obama. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say he looks like... Um, is it Timothy Meadows, who's the guy in Mean Girls, who plays I think the teacher? Who plays the teacher with his arm in the cast? He looks like him. And I'm like, is it just him and he got promoted to principal? <laughs> this scene, I love that. Like, stop following me. I'm going like, home. I live next he's... door. I'm like, fucking exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, you've got a, he's got a point, you fucking idiot. I'm sorry. Like, I'm with you. He is definitely fun. Like, he doesn't have to be that close. And then we, no, no, and the, see, then we know as the audience that he was following her in the other way of stalking her because he gives that little smile. You see... The stalker smile. The st- no, yeah, Why has yeah. she got a miniature coliseum on her desk? Because she's into history. She's a history teacher.
teacher. No, she's not. She's an English, English teacher. Lit. Oh, she's English. She lit. teaches the classics. Which, she, oh, that's right. Maybe because he gave it to her. Who, well, so, he definitely gave it to her, but where'd she get the model you know what, from? Uh, the son. You know what I really like? <laughs> in this scene, he's wearing a denim shirt with a tie. He's always wearing fucking ties to school. What a huge nerd. No, but he stops eventually. A he's a nerd, nerd that would beat you up. Oh yeah. He's, he's also jacked. nearly twenty, so mm. he has a different uh he's a different generation. He would have been in uni with us, like He would be on the show right now if he if he was still around. Also it was weird to me when he's like, Oh, I'm almost twenty. It's always odd to me when in movies like, like this the characters are younger than me. I'm like, what the fuck? It's like um I think there's a post online where it's like you read a book and it's just like a girl like it's like you're reading a book and this character has travelled the world, mm. they've they've Fought and loved and lost and is like and they're only seventeen. Yeah, <laughs> and, like, like, and you just got back from like Woolworths to buy ice cream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I just sat down in a chair. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like how simple am I? But, like the thing <laughs> is, when I was reading those at fifteen, I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And then I was seventeen, I was like, oh shit. See, seventeen was too old. Mm. So. Now we establish that we have guns in this universe. Pew, pew. It's America. Well, you know, but some places in America, you know, they do have guns, but they don't have guns. I know. feel like pumpkins are too expensive to be shooting. They aren't pumpkins for a start. Are they oranges? Good guess. They are, in fact, oranges. They're Clementine. Bartek, did you know pumpkins are too expensive to shoot? Hang on. <laughs> Hang on. I don't know if you remember this scene, Ryan, but this is the scene where he shoots melons. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Fun fact in the trivia. In the trivia, Grace, it's so good that you mentioned... No, it's actually really good she mentioned this. In the trivia, it said that the budget for this film could not afford pumpkins for Did this it? scene I don't to remember be... that. <laughs> they could not afford <laughs> pumpkins. So they had to use oranges that Ryan Guzman had to bring in himself. <laughs> So good, good, ga- good grace, good grace, good grace game, good gracious, <laughs> good gracious. So, did you read the goofs on IMDb? No, I did not. Tell me one of the goofs. Was one of the goofs that they are in fact oranges? <laughs> no, right. <laughs> that they will be on. That will be on our page. There was grace goof. Grace thought the oranges were pumpkins. <laughs> they're fucking big oranges. <laughs> no, they're not. They're just real big. It's cold. Perspective. Your perspective. You know how in the Harry Potter movies that Ian McKellen looks like he's eight feet tall. Sorry, the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. Yeah, the Harry Potter movies that Sorry. Peter Jackson filmed in New Zealand. No, no, Harry Potter. I meant what's his name? The giant. Hagrid. What's the actor's name? Um. Robert Carl. Robbie Coltrane. Robbie Coltrane is a Rob Carla. You know how he looks like he's eight feet tall. Yes. Fun fact, he's not. That's called perspectives. Robbie Coltrane is pretty tall. So was Hagrid always up in the camera while everyone <laughs> else was in the background? It's Yeah. In a lot of perspectives, they use a lot of perspective shots. So that's what you saw with the oranges. So in your brain, the oranges look like pumpkins. In our brain, they look like oranges. Also, it's October. I've got pumpkins on the brain. Also, look, this kid's taller than those stairs. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the house is tiny. Oh, my God. I mean, jeez, Louise. I mean, wow, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen next in this movie? You know, we find out that, in fact, he walks outside the house and everything is tiny. Like, it's <laughs> Gulliver's Travels. Also, um, in, the, in, the, in the pumpkin shooting scene, um, Noah talks about, like, he's, like, Kevin's dad's dick or something. And yeah. if, if a dude talked about my dad's dick, there'd be a grey-shaped dust cloud where I was standing. Before. Well, that's the difference between being uh, a, a teenage girl and a teenage boy. So yeah. if you because leave, we like talking about dicks. If you leave the dust Your cloud, father specifically. Oh, well, that's where I came from. <laughs> no, right, you came from his testicles. Thanks, but where did that shoot from? Good, good. Oh shit, shit. So anyway, uh, the goofs. There was one character error, but it was under spoilers. Which is Noah is far too good for this world. No. Is it that Noah is a hero? <laughs> like when she says, you're not a hero. Spoiler, he is a hero. I'm sorry, Jello. You were guessing? Again. No. Um, it was related to the fact that Claire is an, an English lit teacher. Mm. In the climactic scene in the barn, there is a part where she says to her husband, ex-husband, whatever they are. Pa. Um, 
me and Kevin are here. Now the goof section had a field day with that because an English lit teacher would have said Kevin and I. Did actually say that? When yes. Is, when is your life is under threat. In, in the life threatening no. scene. When I'm also where are the fucking teachers in this EpiPen scene? Well, you see, teachers are too busy okay, in this oh, universe having sex sky, with students. This is a very genuine looking scene. No, really. Yeah, and it's, you it's know what I like? You know what I liked about like, this? I this don't is... quite know why it's here. I though. hate this guy. No, it's setting up for the EpiPen as... To the eye. Because you know what they say, if you introduce an EpiPen in the first act, <laughs> someone's got to be stabbed in the eye in the third act. Mm. So, oh. so, you know, my favourite thing about this scene is, and this is a legitimate thing, I think this is a testament to the writing, the general direction, and I think the acting, is this is the one scene, to me, that tr- truly shows that Noah does not know everything. And I mean yeah. that in the ways of, he doesn't know reality, he's mentally unhinged, but he believes that he knows it. But this is the one scene lot, in which he yeah. genuinely doesn't know what to do. He's out of his element. He didn't know. He needed to be directed mm. on how to do this. And he seems like a guy, since he's almost 20, and he's lived a life, and he had, and he's obviously an adult. Now, he's the kind of character, especially with the son, he seems like he knows everything. And, and he knows how to shoot a gun. He knows how to drive. He knows this, this, and this, and this. And, like, what tools need. He knows how to fix everything. But in that moment, he didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's a beautiful element to add to a character. Because it could have been an easy thing just to be like, this guy's fault is just he's crazy. Ah. No, he's, he's just, you know, he is just... And I'm not saying this is a major character fault, that scene. It's just a little thing to put there to be like hey he's a human at the end of the day he doesn't know everything and ryan do you remember the one thing one particular thing he says in that climactic scene he says something along the lines of how he wanted to be something like a father guiding figure yeah. for kevin but he also you know hates the fact that he hates his father and he hates kevin's father as well mm. maybe a part of him and sorry those two fathers both made mistakes they they mm. didn't know everything they were misguided maybe he himself he hates himself it's tough to be a man grace is sitting there being like i'm not a man grace wrote notes as yeah. did i mm-hmm. i brought stuff but i didn't write notes grace what were some of the notes that you wrote um, for this particular scene... Well, well, before I wrote Orange to the Thigh, Blue to the Sky. Good. Mm-hmm. Poetry. Um, in this scene I wrote, well, fucking rude. I don't know what, in reference to what, though. And I Is it because I... she touched him? No. And then later on I wrote, good old Mike. <laughs> oh, Mike was a hero. Yeah. I, I literally went, oh, is that an extra? <laughs> or is that like a cameraman? Yeah, oh we well, confused at the window, Mike. Are we meant to know who that is? <laughs> like, is that the gender or something? I thought, oh, it's the gender, but I also thought, is that a is that a boom mic guy? Like, I don't know what's happening, because he just kind of, like, appears... That's why it's called Mike, then it's like, oh, we need an extra called boom mic guy. Mike, the microphone guy. <laughs> I really would watch a movie about Mike in the third one, where it's like, he's actually, like, like this... PI detective who got he's 21 jump streeting it up where he's like <laughs> down with the kids. <laughs> you just did the hang ten sign. <laughs> oh. So he's down with the kids. So you wrote just like bullet point notes as did I. Bartek, you brought some stuff. Is it the right time to listen to this or do you want to save it? Um, honestly, at this point we kind of know everything that's going to happen so it can happen at any time. Well, the audience, you know, we haven't the plot we haven't actually said what it is. Yeah. For those who aren't in the know-how of the boy next door, you know, we've already missed it but he is a student of hers. He's got psychopathic tendencies. She makes a bad call and has sexual relations with him and he becomes obsessed with her to the point of Injuring and murdering people, and it becomes a cat and mouse game, and um, it all reaches to a, the climactic showdown, of course. And it's interesting because this, you know, Bartek, your teacher, um, well, it's is interesting. Well, you know, okay, I've but, had experience, but you've had experience being a teacher. You're studying teaching. You're going to be a teacher, most likely. Mm-hmm. You know the education field. It's very interesting that this film chooses the reasonings for why she doesn't speak up, which is that she would lose her job mm-hmm. as a teacher. But losing your job as a teacher through um, incidences of sexual assault and harassment and all that is 
even worse than just losing a job because it's indicating that you're losing because it because of damage reputation. Damage of reputation and that you've done something to children, yes. So this is what I like about this. See, you can complain, why doesn't she call the cops? Or why doesn't she do this? And the the dynamic that the the, the, the kind of mouse trap that that Noah has put her in through her position in life is really interesting. And I would just want to hear your perspective on it as someone who's studying teaching, like the, this, this situation, you know, like mm -hmm. what, what do you think about it? How do you feel? And what, you know, what's your knowledge of? Well, in my most recent placement, which was, it was happening during some of the past couple of episodes. Um, I, I did get told by the, uh, my supervisor that, yeah, uh, especially for male teachers, you really got to watch out what you're doing. Mm. So, like, uh, no physical contact. Make sure that if you're... If... If it turns out that you and a student are alone in a room, make sure you're standing a certain distance away. Um, it, just a lot of being really careful. And he also told me that um, with different types of students, you just need them to know different types of things. Like, one of the things he said that kind of took me back was um for a lot of the female students they they just need to know that you like them mm. which is basically like hey if you if you if they know that you're cool with them then they're probably going to behave better whereas with the guy students uh, it takes a little bit more you got to you know relate to them in some level mm. uh it, there's a, just a lot of things to consider and like when i was teaching some lessons i would just i would just say certain things and not consider how they would be taken. Like, there was one mm. question I asked where... It was a question... Which was, that... have you listened to Spit and Polish Presents on Appreciated <laughs> Masterpieces? No, no. And they no, said, no. yes, Mr. K, it's my favourite podcast. I recommend it to all the other cool kids. Mm -hmm. But there are no cool kids, so that means no one. Oh, wow. wow. That's unfortunate. You were saying I know, that? it's very sad. Um, yeah, I, I asked a question and it was... It was one that had, like, an obvious answer, but it could have, like, multiple answers as well. And the first answer I got was the answer I was looking for, and I said, that's exactly the answer I was looking for, and I was later told, like, yeah, that might be true, but that kind of ends discussion, ends, you know, a reason to think more about the topic. So it's, like, considering all these little things. Yeah. I think I kind of diverged from the question you asked. It's but... okay, you always do. It's a guarantee. <laughs> So, Grace, you must be thrilled to not only get that sex scene once in the movie, but twice, three times a lady. Yeah. So, um, Grace, did you have a favourite scene in this movie or moment? Um, yes, I did. Which it was? was I, I think it was either the EpiPen scene or... Yen's scene. EpiPen? The one no, that we just the saw? No, the one we just oh, saw. Oh, okay, yeah. Or a scene about to come up with the, um, the lockers. The lockers? Oh, the the, yeah. the violent one. The violent one. The one that gets him kicked out. Bartek, yes. what about you? Again, m much like picking a favourite character, I really don't know. That's a, it's a tough question to answer, that is. Well, I have a toss-up of a few. I'll give you my first one, which yeah. is one that we're going to be... I think we're encountering soon. You might influence my answer. Which is reason. when she confronts him in his own house. Mm. She's like, what do you want? What do you think is going to happen? What did you think was going to happen here? She asks what the audience asks, and a lot of movies like this fail to ask, which is, with people like Noah, uh, yeah, what well, is the expectations that the he has? Goal, yeah. Like, what's the end goal? Because, you know, once the psychosis is set in motion, you know the end goal is that they're going to kill them, or something, or rape them, or hurt them. But before that point, what was the end goal? And his reaction was priceless to me. It was a moment of hilarity, f but also genuine terror because he's so unhinged. She asks him, what do you want? And he just says something like, the world is big. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, that's right. It just and he refuses to answer the question, which is great writing because it lets us as the audience know subtly that he doesn't know. Mm. But he's it, making it up as he goes along. He's following emotions, not logic. That extra who was meant to be a high school student just had grey hair. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that he's wearing a shirt that literally says swag. With a lion roaring. Like right. let's, let's, <laughs> let's make Ed Sheeran as aggressive as we can. 
Come on, let's do it. Uh, it really does. That kick is great. That no, that no, he's all legs. No, it's good because this action scene is shot very well. You do feel the the pain and the fact that he punches her. Like, well, get the, the fuck out of it. He doesn't like, punch her. One of the, uh, also, the kid that catches One of the hero. goof says that her dress changes between shots. Is that, is that true? I, I, she's wearing blue now. Uh, maybe between, like, her, he, and the yeah, office. Yeah, the, the office. That's Who apparently... is that beefcake? It is Mr. Beef. Oh, yeah, she does change. Maybe because well, he broke her day. dress. He broke her dress. No, because, yeah, it's not the different days. We're in the same outfit. Maybe because he broke her dress because he did, like, push her. Mm, and it was yeah. a tight dress because, you know, as he says, she is an old maybe, cunt. <laughs> maybe the beefcake got and like. That's all they wear. Maybe the beefcake got too energetic and he accidentally ruined the dress. I reckon that guy would be great if you found out that he was an X Man in this movie because he looks like Colossus. Am <laughs> I right? Wouldn't it be great if he picked him up and went, Bad Mr. Noah? <laughs> Go down here and think about what you have done. <laughs> He's like the kindergarten teacher who got promoted to high school. But he him. also looked like the mountain, the most recent one from Game of Thrones. <laughs> so, the mountain and Colossus. She doesn't even look that old, mm. uh, might I add. He looks old. <laughs> yeah, when he said, like, dried up, dirty, fucking, I didn't expect cunt. But you wanted more. I didn't want more, I expected more. You're gone. You're expelled. Except well, not really. <laughs> what I liked about this scene is to... See, this movie, Grace, uh, I really don't simple. understand... Oh, yeah, it's, it's the black yeah, guy. Yeah. Um, I don't understand what you don't like about it because as I'm talking, I'm realising that there's lots and lots of scenes that are really well done, really character-motivated, uh, foreshadowing, foreboding, getting the sense of tone right, getting the humour right getting the sense of threat, all this stuff. Like, that scene was great because the dynamics changed very, very well in which she was the one who was like, I'm the top dog here, I'm the vice principal, I looked up everything about you, I know what you are, you're expelled. But then it switched when he flipped into his real personality and he scared her and the way she says, you're expelled, you're out of here, and she's terrified. Oh, yeah, she can't speak until he's gone. And then... And then you see that look on her face. That scene is great. And then this scene that's literally about to come up is my favorite scene. <laughs> the bathroom. The bathroom scene is going to be up there with, you know, with the great scenes. With Brad no, Pitt. No, it's a horrible, horrible <laughs> scene. And I think it should be taken out of the movie. No, it's a great scene. It's a terrible scene. You just don't it. like near rape scenes, do I you? I really don't like attempted rape. It, or any form, shape. Of rape, it's not great. But I don't like it. But you have to agree that sometimes that no. that it is uh, have to the, these these horrors that happen in humanity, violence, rape, all this stuff, racism, homophobia have to be told in stories to highlight the darker side of men. Yes and no. So the thing is, is if you're gonna put that stuff in, you gotta know what the what the what the fuck you're talking about. You gotta. Uh, this do film it in a knows what it's talking about. No, no, no. Look, you fuck Claire Peterson. Peterson. Also, that's isn't that really good? Like spray can work. Like it's it's very. You can good. read it. Yeah. It's not like a tag. Mm. Fun fact: he's nearly twenty, so he does not tag anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what can you only tag like <laughs> when, under you're, 20? when you're an eighteen and below? I see. Because he's nearly twenty. Mm. Nearly 20. Yeah. <laughs> so he's 19. <laughs> so, you know, wouldn't it be a surprise if he's actually like 18? Then he's like, I'm nearly 20, though. <laughs> he's like, one of those arseholes. It's a, it's he a skips reversal. a year. Like, he's one of those arseholes that don't count 19. But, like, okay, it's an interesting. I'm sorry, what are those arseholes that don't count 19? Oh, there are people. Don't who... get us started. Oh, they're, 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 they're cold. They're cold, Noah. I see. And, uh, no, see, I get what you're saying, Grace. Uh, I do. But, you know, like when there's scenes where a character gets raped and it comes out of nowhere, Game of Thrones does that on the occasion just for the shock value. Oh, and this is a near rape. But I don't feel like this... I feel like as... I don't know how to walk about this, but I feel like in context it's done correctly because it's not an out-of-nowhere... Yeah, thing for the character to do. It, yeah, it isn't out of nowhere, and it does go with what we've seen of Noah, and it does, it, it does like make us think even worse of Noah. But I just like. And with the first sex scene they had, it was pretty much 
a rape scene as well because he was nowhere like I don't want I'm gonna keep going until you give me until you let me in your pants it's not like the beefcake guy just suddenly started raping it's like who no. are you why are you raping uh, we see we see near, we see side vag side vag yeah side vag I, I didn't see it oh you're never looking look <laughs> and also just to conclude that last thing rape is like grape it's just missing a G did you hear that Grace your name has a G if you move it, it's race. As in, you're racing up to see Boy Next Door 2. If you change one In which the boy next door is Jason Bateman. Ryan. What? <laughs> Jason you, Bateman? If you change one letter in Grace's name, it becomes Grape. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. This is my... I love this. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> what was the direction on that? It was like, give it an insincere smile. Mm, can you look as creepy as possible, please? No, creepier. While creepier. getting blown. Mm. Creepier. No, no, okay. That's all That's all you can do. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I really like that locker room. I mean, the bathroom scene. The lighting is perfect. It has a real kind of... um. John Carpenter Halloween feel. That's why I think it's appropriate for October. You, you told me earlier that the thing he clogged up the is sink women's with, hair. Was hair. It looks more like seaweed to me. It it's, looked like blonde like, hair. It's like pantyhose, isn't it? What? Actually, maybe it was. Yo, no, I swear it was like right, women's it, it hair. Did, it it did. Why would it be hair? And because, why would she used to go? Oh, weird hair. Just pull it out. The because side. it's a because. In movies like this, you want to make the tone as unsettling as possible. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, they, in movies, even great ones, do random things. Ryan, are you really settled by seaweed? Also, she did not clean this all up in like a matter of minutes. Hey, it's J-Lo, Jenny from the block. She did it super Don't quick. Don't be fooled by the She's over 45 she's years old and she looks like she did back in... 2004 when this was made <laughs> so, so this was made right after the music video I got really confused I was looking at stuff for this movie and I was reading stuff and there was reviews and there was like reviews and it was like saying 2009 2004 and I'm like hmm. what's this it's like oh and I read it wrong. I was like, this movie didn't come out in 2004. It felt like it. Hmm. It was, no, the users have been on here since 2004. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, thank oh, God. Okay. Thank God. I thought, like, am I wrong? Do we live in 2006? And this came out in 2005? Oh, boy. So, this is a good shot. It, yeah. It's very artistic. Bartek? Very slow, too, yeah. So, Bartek, what was your thoughts on that, that uh, bathroom scene? Because like, you were talking before that you liked it as well. Um... The thing that I liked in it was his when he appears. Mm. It's this kind of like slow turn, but it's not like the turn where like his head is always looking at her. It's the it's the turn where the head's always facing like the same direction as the body, just like not turning the. Other you way. mean like Michael Keaton as Batman, or every Batman until the Dark Knight, really? Because they did not figure out that they need to turn next, so they just turned their whole body. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess. You remember that? But. I love that. I wish they would bring that back. <laughs> like bring that bat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Then they will. Wouldn't it be great if this film was longer? Do you think that this film, like the last one we did, Red Riding Hood, could have benefited from another ten minutes? I enjoyed the quick pace, but I felt like I need. I wanted. I wanted to hang out with these guys more. Yeah. Well, if you if this film. Yeah, film. If this film was ten minutes longer, it would be the length of Red Riding Hood. Yeah, I think like in this case, it doesn't need to be two hours. I think a hundred minutes. I think there's ten minutes. I wanted to know the dad more. I wanted to I know the too. son and dad's relation. I wanted to know the family's relationship. Yeah, we could have seen the. I have had trip. more than enough of the son, to be honest. You're not a fan of his eyebrows. But, but, I'm not a fan of Lego like, well, Henry no. But no, he looks well, like Paranorman. Well, oh, shit, he does. <laughs> he does actually, yeah. But I think what Ryan is saying, the son with the dad. Like, this yeah, is one like, scene This where... is the scene. Yeah. Mm. In which he loses his shit. And the scene where it's like, I, you know, where it's like, here's a computer. Do you want to build computers with me? Yeah, dad. Which is everybody's favorite scene with the dad. Mm. The computer building scene, which didn't happen. But this scene is like, I dropped computer class. I missed that class. Oh, <laughs> That, they was that talk, this scene? Or no, that one? was the dinner where he lost oh, his shit. Yeah, he lost where, his where shit. Where he was bigger time. than the stairs. Mm. Yeah, that's right. And, and there were, and no pumpkins were involved. Mm. Yeah. Like, the, the, he's a, 
uh, sorry, before this scene, he lost his shit at his dad and his mum, like, once each. That was, like, when he jumped into Noah's car for the mum, and the scene where he was giant for the dad. Mm. And then, for, until the dad picks him up, he's kind of back in his calm thing. I did like that duality, like, he's not always pissed off. Mm. It's just that when something happens that just, like, stirs him, then he gets pissed off. Yeah. It's not like a one-dimensionally, I'm always going to be pissed off once I get pissed off. Exactly. I think so. Yeah, I I like it. And I like the fact that There's no clutch. Oh my god, it returns. (laughs) Sorry. Thanks. There's just a lot of talking about clutches in this movie. Do you... Grace, how do you feel about clutching? No comment. How do you feel about clutches? Stop saying clutch like that. <laughs> Clutching. Hey, Ryan, clutch sounds like the word crotch. I thought these, <laughs> I thought these were the police for a second. I'm yeah, like, why, why are the cops yeah. just sitting there? There's, but a, then... there's a story there, and we don't know what it I is. I thought you were like, you knew the story. I like how they had to switch to go ca- go GoPro footage for a second there. Yeah, fine, you know, why not? It's called, it's called, it's called cinematography. How did they get the car back to the house? Uh, they would have got they phoned someone up and been like beep beep boom well there's boom. a tow truck like 100 metres just up the road maybe the beefcake would happen to be around yeah, the when car he up. picked up the car <laughs> carried it over it was, it was a plot twist that those guys actually, those guys that were waiting actually cut it themselves <laughs> because they got a business going on <laughs> <laughs> Also, the first time I was watching this and she walks past the car, I did not notice a dint whatsoever. Oh, you're oh, blind. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. it is. I didn't either. I wear glasses for a reason, you know. I know, she's blind. Well, I don't My wear thing glasses. was, why would you leave your car window down when you know there's a psychopath next door? Because he's already messed with it. What, is he going to mess with it again? This is one of the best Noah scenes as well. Every scene with Noah is great. I think, really... He Noah's a favourite character as well. Yeah. We're not telling... We're, like, we say Christian Chenoweth, but on the other end of the spectrum is Noah. He really sells the movie, I think. You know, he knows the actor Ryan Guzman. Guzman, Guzman. Guzman. Whatever. Uh, he knows what this is. He knows that this is a B-grade movie. And I appreciate actors who know what they're in, and in a good way. Like, when they go, I'm going to commit to this, but I know that this isn't Shakespeare. Like I know Chen- that... Huh? Like Bruce Campbell. Like Bruce Campbell. Mm. They're having fun, but they're not lazy in the ways that Christopher Walken has become. You know, where Oh, this a, is a big call from you. No, I've always said Christopher Walken's lazy, but it's fun. Okay. He's fun, but he's not doing it. I'm waiting for Christopher Walken to come back. Okay. Like, he did in Seven Psychopaths. I felt like this is where you've got the perfect amalgamation of having Christopher Walken... And having a character played by Christopher Walken in a different way where he says Christopher Walken. Mm -hmm. Feels going to come back, but he's been playing Christopher Walken for years. Mm -hmm. But this is the opposite, where this guy, you know, like if he ended up playing psychopaths in more movies in this style, I I, I think he would be like a Bruce Campbell type, maybe. Because, you know, Bruce Campbell's silly and he's fun. I feel like Ryan Guzman, he could do that. Because Bruce Campbell was a young, attractive guy. He was a bit of a BK, a bit of a, you know, silly guy. And I feel like this guy could be that. He could be the next Bruce Campbell. Dude, if Psycho was made today, Ryan Guzman, Norman Bates. I think, no, I Uh, think... Not Vince Vaughn again? Are you sure? Not Vince Vaughn? Are you sure? Are you sure? I stand corrected, I guess. (laughs) <laughs> we've already seen Vince Vaughn play a psychopath in uh, Starskin Hutch, so we've already oh, nailed not, it. Not, not the Gus Van Sant, like, almost shot for shot. Oh, I know. And I know what that is, oh. and boy, have I, have I lived it. So this is a great <laughs> scene. This is a great scene, Bartek. Oh, so, yeah, this is the scene you like. This is the scene where I like, where she's like, what do you think is going to happen here? Here? Nothing. And it's like, but it's a big world out there, Claire. Like, what does that mean? To be, there is some truth to that. Like, oh, there's is, uh, truth to if you ask me, hey, hey, Ryan, is the sky blue? And I just go, the sky could be any color if you had different sets of peripheral visions and color sensibilities. Like, yeah, that's true. I yeah, guess. but but in this sense, in this sense, he's talking about unpredictability, whereas that that's science. Yeah, I guess. Okay, is the sky blue? Yeah, but we could die, so <laughs> you know, unpredictable. So what's the point in noticing? <laughs> what's the point in asking questions? We're dead. Which is why I ask so many questions on this show, because it's prolonging my life. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder what other hobbies he has. Like, do you think... Well, he likes cars. Do you think he likes Garfield? <laughs> yeah. I think he likes school. Yeah, Education. Yeah, yeah. I think he's a smart kid. Yeah, he likes ho- He likes Homer a lot. 
he does like he does like that. He does like the subject that she teaches, which is whatever you say. Classic is. literature. literature. Or history. <laughs> oh, yeah. We, Classic we did, history. We didn't talk about Is it. Is she cupping her own boob there? Yeah, because he's holding it himself. It's like, Christian Jenner was like, damn, she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you heard something? Um, way back in the scene with the blind date, and they were talking about, um, you know, how important the classics are. Um, I wanted to bring it up. I forgot to mention it. There have been some things that I've heard from teachers on placement that, like, they're getting kind of tired of teaching the classics because it's such a commonly taught thing and that they want to teach other things. Mm. Yeah, like Big Fat Liar and The uh, Boy Next Door. Again, well, I won't say you're wrong because they want to teach contemporary things as well. One of, one of my teachers um, in uh, high school really, really wanted to teach uh, the movie Lars and the Real Girl, but she was just like, yeah, whenever I pitched it to people, they were just like, no, we... We're not showing children that movie. Children <laughs> won't know. Chil- we're not going to show children a movie where Ryan Gosling with a mustache falls in love with a sex doll. That's not happening. You're crazy, Greta. Stop it. To, to give Greta. Um... <laughs> Greta, get out of here with your <laughs> sex doll movies. This is like Again, the... Greta? Really? Again with the sex doll movies? This is like the 15th one you've pitched us this week. <laughs> get out of here, Greta. How do you keep finding so many of them? <laughs> Did you make this yourself? You're a producer. <laughs> oh, Brian, you said you like this scene. This scene, I thought was really smart. It was really good. I, I liked thought it was it really so good. And I, and I like it. what I liked about it was it was a mixture of surprise but predictability in terms of. <laughs> I know what you mean, weirdly enough. In terms of, we as the audience secretly deep down know that. It's not her because of the previous scene. But when it is revealed that it's not her, we're still a little bit mm. like, oh. Yeah. We, we weren't... Ex- because I guess that's because we don't know what J-Lo's going to be up to. Yeah. Mm. I guess also we weren't expecting... Christian Chenoweth? No, no, no. We weren't expecting Christian Chenoweth's reaction. Which is to mm. look at him like he is food. It's like, oh, so you do... Wait, look. Mmm. <laughs> she looks like, mmm. Where's that's my steak? Yeah, what I what I meant by that was we we weren't expecting <laughs> like mistake. that he wasn't supposed to see her. I yeah, guess. I thought like why would you lean closer? And now she's like shit. Hey, does Christian? Do you think Christian Chenoweth would be a better Joker than Jared Leto? I think she oh, looks better than who? Than Jared Leto or Leto? How do you pronounce it? Everyone like, has a different way of pronouncing I've it. I've only ever my, heard Leto. My my no. cat could be a better Joker. I swear to God. I think she would be a great Joker. And she sings. Because Christian Chenoweth, um, but like you may not be aware, Grace, I imagine you are, mm-hmm. uh, her most iconic role is on the stage as uh, Glinda, the, the good witch in okay. Wicked. Okay. She really kind of defined the role, like how Tim Curry defines Frankenfurter, she defines Glinda. Okay. Everyone who has done Glinda that I'm aware of is basically doing Christian Chenoweth, basically. Yes and no. But yeah. But basically, like how you can say yes and no about how everyone who's done Frankenfurter is basically Tim Curry. Like there are those exception I, to the I, rules. I, I feel like Frankenfurter, the whole Frankenfurter Tim Curry thing, it's just like Tim Curry was did was like the first, and I was about to say the only one who's who's done it, but that's blatantly untrue. But like there aren't that many versions of Reg Livermore did a great one. He was the Australian Tim Curry. I mean the Australian the Australian Frankenfurter. Yes, I. What? He made it really different. Mm, he was he? like, his version of Frankenfurter was not. He never saw Frankenfurter as this charming individual. He saw him more as the type of person that would be a truck driver by day. That's how he described it. I, weirdly, back to my high school, another one of my teachers. He's like, like I've got truck movies. Out, you, should, <laughs> you should check out Reg. Um, Livermore, Livermore. 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 I'm like, okay, and I did. And he's good. He was in a, 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 a he was in a very similar musical that to Rocky Horror that was also Australian called Betty Blockbuster uh, Nazi Nurse or something. I beg your pardon. Yeah. I never know whether you're making shit up. No, anymore. no, it's real. It's it's supposed to be a really good rock musical called Betty Blockbuster. I think it's like he's a Nazi nurse. A sadistic Nazi nurse. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we're getting away from the use of Mac computers in this, which is good to know. Trash. Uh, Mac computers take really long. He's to... very organised. 
organised in his yeah. stalking. Also... Far too organised for a 20-year-old. Almost 20. Oh, I'm sorry, almost 20-year-old. Also, I got confused with this... I thought it was going to be, like, showing up rockets. I did too! <laughs> I was like, was he behind <laughs> that... <laughs> High five! <laughs> Woo! Like, was he behind <laughs> that rocket blowing up and killing all the astronauts? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was he behind <laughs> Tom Hanks getting lost in space? Jeez. I mean, Houston, we have a Noah. I like how it was Dodge Challenger and then it was Minivan 2008. <laughs> yeah, like, there's no specific brand. Mm. Yeah, like, I thought it was, like... Are those incidents or something? Because I'm not very... And my favourite jump scare of all time ever in a movie is Stanley Jump Scare. Hello, True Believer. <laughs> I honestly thought that he'd been killed by Noah. I th- in that scene, I actually said, Oh no, the basement. Oh no, he's down there. Like, Grandpa's I... gra- great uncle's down there. Could I just declare, maybe he's my favourite character. Old Uncle Stan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when, and that's why it's a Marvel movie too with Colossus because Stan Lee's in it. <laughs> it good, Mr. good Mr. Good Mr. Lee. Stan Lee's in a lot of unappreciated masterpieces. He was also in The Wedding Date. Yeah. yeah. He was also in Princess Diaries 2, which we have not done. You know he's actually in that, right? Is he? Stan Lee's in. The Princess Diaries 2 as a cameo of himself at her wedding. Like, they walk past and he, she shakes his hand. He's like, oh! Yeah, Lee's here. And it's before Marvel owned Disney, so it's kind of like... Well, Disney owns Marvel. Yeah, Disney yeah. owns Marvel. Also, the... Marvel owns Disney, Disney owns Marvel. They all own each other. In I the end, so. Sony just wants something. The sun <laughs> is about to come in and be like, what's up with the knife? Uh, he says it in the most nonchalant way. If I yeah. saw my mum with a knife shaking, I'd be like, what's up with the, like, what's up with the knife? But he's like this... What's up with the knife? Yeah, and you know... Oh, what's with the knife? And you know what her reaction could have been? What? I thought you were a rubber with the way you were shaking that door. Mm. Yeah. It's like... Where the your key, Kevin? Bam. Oh, no. Now, this actually did genuinely get me. Yeah, I, I, I was just like, not my favourite character. But it also was like, I did not... I will be honest, I did not expect him to go to her house. Mm. I, I knew either. that it was all going to culminate to the barn because at the start, I said this jokingly, I said, ah... Oh, they're going to use that giant engine for something because they showed it in one shot. And I'm like, why would they show that without it being important? Essentially, like, you know what I mean? Like, everything in film, especially in introductions, are very important. They're setting up things. They're setting up stages, locations, things to come. Why would they just show the barn with the engine hanging up top unless it's going to be used? And see, I misused my that kind of genre savvy, uh, sa- savviness. Mm. In the scene where he pulls the gun out of the wardrobe, I was looking around, what else is in this wardrobe? What could come back later? And nothing yeah. came up back. You know, you know what I like about this scene? Now, Grace, you know, for a bit of context, we did an episode on a show, uh, on a movie called Flipper. Yeah, I love that and episode. And in that movie, Isaac Hayes plays a policeman, and they give him an incredible amount of evidence. So much evidence that it's ludicrous. Like, conclusive Conclusive evidence. evidence. And he says... Uh, he, say, he literally says, I'm like... He grabs the scientific test and goes, I don't need tests, I, I don't need, need evidence. I don't need these scientific findings. I want, like, hard evidence. This guy, I feel like, is in the same police precinct as Isaac Hayes. Because it's just like, how inept are you guys? Like, he's just like, obviously, drink driving, because he had previous charges. I mean, we didn't check it. We just kind of guessed, like, you know, winged it, you know? I'm getting nostalgic for Flipper now. <laughs> That's a quote. I'm getting nostalgic for Flipper. When aren't you nostalgic? Chip sandwich, anyone? Come on. Do, do you, have you eaten that? Um, a ham sandwich with mayonnaise and lettuce with crinkle cut chips. Not that exact combination, no. Bartek? Uh, I'm not big into ham, so. But you've had chips on a sandwich, like yeah, potato chips. I can see. Not, not from, like you know, like on like Smith's chips, crisps. You've had I, crisps on a. Sa- I haven't. Yeah. I don't necessarily know that I have, but it sounds like something I would have tried once. Sounds- I absolutely have. And are they great? Well, they're, like, I don't remember them. So, no, right. is the answer. I, wouldn't, I would think I it's think okay. That, I think putting chips in sandwiches is an American thing, isn't it? Yeah, maybe. And putting hot chips is No, hot chips thing. is great. And circumcision. Mm. But, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Hot the, chips and this circumcision. This is the dick great cut, bang. after all. So, did you think she was alive in this monologue? Uh, to be honest, I, was, I, I, I wrote in my notes, let's play a game called Tied Up or Dead. And <laughs> I... For a hot second, I thought he was talking to her dismembered head. And I'm like, both? I actually thought he was talking to 
for some reason, I was like, does she have a pet dog? Wouldn't it be great if he was talking to her dog? But we, we do find out in this shot that she has a pet, at least. <laughs> What um, was that pet? Was it no, dog? Look on the left oh, side of the frame. Oh, yeah. The I wrote in my notes, the cat the is shop. licking, licking not only itself, but it's like going the countertop edge. Mm. Like, it's on the edge, yeah. licking the countertop. I'm like, what happened that on set really that day? That just does not give a fuck. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like in Gone Girl. Yeah, David Fincher had a cat in that movie that he really liked because it was just like the kind of cat that you just plonk it down and it did nothing. I think, I re- yeah, I remember that cat. Yeah, and look at this. And you know, it was like... Maybe he's talking... Wouldn't it be great if he was talking to the cat? Like, he's like... He zooms out and you just see, like, whiskers yeah. coming into frame. And you're like, what is happening here? See, I didn't think he was the type to talk to a dead body, so... No, he's not that crazy. And her head moves. <laughs> what, if he had a severed head, where was he sticking it on? Like, a spike? I don't know, maybe. Have you seen, um... The the Voices? It's a Ryan Reynolds movie? I know of it. It will be on here. Oh, okay. Oh, can I please come in? We haven't done a Ryan Reynolds movie, have we? Really? I feel like... Every Ryan Reynolds movie is unappreciated, except for Van Wilder and Deadpool. Mm Mm-hmm. You know? I've not seen Van Wilder. Yeah, hence it's not unappreciated. (laughs) Oh, and I've only seen unappreciated stuff. Yeah. Everyone's seen Van Wilder, except for you. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone loves Van Wilder. I'm so behind the eight ball. So, as we get closer to the end of the movie... Things are getting more and more tense. Christian Chenoweth is there. Now, what's in her mouth? Uh, it's like a scarf or something, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. It looks papery. It looks like paper to eye. It looks like silk. Yeah. Maybe it's a red napkin. I, I thought it was her underwear. Because he's the kind of guy who would do that. You're not wrong, but why did you go there? Because he's the type of guy who would do that. Because if he's not wrong, then like you got no choice. I love, to go you're there. not wrong, but why did you go there? <laughs> it's it's not what? No, no, no you're you're foiled there again, Grace. <laughs> Use my own logic against me, Drash. I know you call me silly old Grace. Doesn't know logic. <laughs> I, Put her over here I with Mister Noah. <laughs> right, I know you're right, but why do you call me Bartek? <laughs> <laughs> His name is Glartek. We already went this. And his name is Gambler. <laughs> so, okay, this is this is the part of the movie where she does phone the police. Mm. And I thought he was in her car. I did too. But instead, he just casually walks <laughs> over and taps his gun and he's like, get out. Why the fuck didn't she lock her fucking doors? I lock my why doors wouldn't you when just, I leave work. Why wouldn't you hit like, accelerate? I know. Why don't you turn your car off? Also, why is the front of her phone blank? Oh, it's because she's got the it's, the torchlight it's on. It's loading. Yeah, but you can you don't have to. What have did you want to see her Facebook? Did you hashtag finding dead friends? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I, this was like, genuinely like, terrifying. It was. I know Chenoweth is is small and you know can she's seasonally well, be same height as Danny DeVito. Well, yeah. she's the first. What? She's the same height as Danny DeVito. Why the fuck do oh, you know that? Because I know Danny DeVito is... Like inside and out. I know his insides. <laughs> Danny DeVito is just above dwarf height. Mm-hmm. I think he's like 4'11". Mm-hmm. And so she. Okay. Yeah, and um, and that's the first character that we really know dying in the movie. So yeah. it was an extra shock. They actually built up to it. And this is it. She's phoning the police. Now, what happened to the police? Did she turn off her phone? I don't know. It, we didn't hear any, like, disengage sound. We just heard nothing. It just stopped. And then, get out. Tap, tap. Get out of here. And he seems, like, really bothered. No, not that way, you idiot. It's really annoying that she didn't lock her doors. And choke her out. Please. So, so he did it for her. Now, this is the bit that I liked, Bartek. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if how you felt, but it's very late in the game that we get this, that... Heroes, no heroes kill their mothers and fathers, whatever, and all that. The hero's complex that he has about it, that he actually says it. Now, I'm watching it a second time, I really noticed that they actually did kind of ingrain this into his character with the whole thing that he's obsessed with the Iliad, the Iliad yeah. and Achilles and all this. But when I watched it the first time, it was like, oh, this is a new, interesting, random new feature that they've never built up to that they've shoved <laughs> in at the last moment. But see, this is the great thing about watching it again. You notice, you've been watching, I think discussing and watching it again, that you notice these interesting details. Movies deserve, some movies, more than others, deserve multiple viewings. In this case, I'm the freak, because I did notice that. You noticed it? Yeah. Did you, Grace? 
Good God, no. Because do you remember the scene where he's talking about how awesome he Homer is? Gracious. That's memorable. It was. It was. He was like really into it. Yeah. Also, apparently the goose were talking about how the father and son have a lot of. Did you say? Wait, wait, did you say goose? The goofs yeah, on IMDb. I thought you said the goose we were talking goose, about. I'm like, yeah, I don't remember any goose in this no, movie. No, no, no. The go offs were talking about how their ropes have a lot of slack and that they're like clearly just sitting there. My favorite part is she just doesn't like unscrew the thing to let the sun out. Mm. She's like, he all he's done is just like tied the rope and just like you know, tighten the crank to, like, trap him there. Look at this. She's like, okay, I won't do that. I'll just grab your EpiPen, which is weird. Like, I get it. He's having a panic attack. But look, he's just tied against that thing. Mm. All you have to do is unclamp the thing. Literally, that's what the goose was saying. Yeah, he's got enough slack to unwind the the grip. Oh, well, I don't think he does at the moment. But, like, the dad does escape, so... Props to the dad. Mm. How did he escape? I got kind of confused. Yeah, yeah. I really like the dad, like, trying to, like... Kick his ass, even yeah. though he's, like, un- nearly unconscious himself. Mm. Like, he uh, comes alive just to be angry. Fun and, fact, like... in Wolf Creek 2, there was a guy who got stabbed in the spinal cord, and he got up and hit John Jarrett with a plank of wood. Well, and then he got his head cut off with a knife. Well. So, you know, fun fact. Mm. Was that the German guy? Yeah. Yeah. Rutger. Rutger. Rutger Hauer. <laughs> I fucking knew you were going to say that. Hobo with a shotgun, baby. <laughs> He's in that. He's the hobo, not the shotgun. <laughs> In case you're wondering. He's a shotgun of an actor, though. Mm. Double barreled. So, Grace, tell us your feelings about how you were when you were watching this climactic scene. Did, did it... Did it do what all mov- all great movies should do with a third act, which is make you feel the intensity of what the situation is? Now, you may not have liked the movie, but did it give you that? Well, I'll tell you what I was thinking, Ryan, because I wrote down some notes. <laughs> I wrote down, why is this kid so jacked? And Aiden is finally useful for a second. Wait, which kid? The, the, the... Um, Noah. Well, I think it explains that. He's nearly yeah. 20. He's nearly 20. He's not a kid. I mean, when we were in the when we were in twenties, we met people who were hugely jacked. I've met people who are really fit, and they're only like twenty two. And I'm For like, for a second, Why? I thought you no, meant Ryan, like we personally met people who were. We hugely have jacked. personally met people such as me, Bartek's <laughs> Jack. I'm sorry, Bartek. I you know actually... Jake Burns? No, I don't. I swear. No, I don't. Listeners, know Jake you know Jake Burns. Right? <laughs> you know Jake Burns. He's been on the show. No, he hasn't. No, that was Alistair. <laughs> happening we're talking about people we know you usually jacked okay here's one when i now this is a personal story when i went to university for the first time i encountered really attractive women that were the same age as me in my high school they were just women who were attractive but then i rocked up to university and i'm like is this where all the hot women are at like and i mean like the Hollywood standards of attractive too, not just mm. like oh whatever. Like I was just like, so I think when you hit your twenties, that happens. People t- physical gents are why is he so ripped? Because he's nearly twenty, and that's okay. actually not a surly answer. I think that's a legit answer. Mm. And also his parents died. Come on, Come he's got to press the weights. Mm. So it looked like he was trying to unscrew it or something. Yeah, and then I forgot to pay attention. I was did you me. forget the fact that he got? St- you know, that, you know, stabs in the eye. I feel like they missed an opportunity by cutting the Aiden, like, I keep calling him Aiden because that's his character's name in Sex and the City, cutting the dad's, like, fight scene short by shooting him because that could have been pretty good. He was shot in the shoulder, if that makes you feel any better. Oh, the idea that the dad yes, defeats does, him? Thank you. Yeah. That would actually be quite sim. There would be a lot of symbolism yeah. to that, mm. that the dad kills him or yeah. the dad the thing, beats him. The thing him. that he hates, or well, that we assume was one of the things he hates the most, mm. defeats him. Mm. But also... I do like it, that Claire defeats him, though. No, it is good. It's an obvious thing. The, the protagonist has to defeat, defeat the antagonist, mm. whether it is literally or symbolically, mm. right? Um, you know, and, and stabbed in the eye. I screamed when this happened. I just went, what, ah! about, what about when she puts her finger... In his eye socket, oh. and goo comes out. I, I that's, didn't. That's I a horror just, movie. Thing. Oh, it's horrible. That's why this is a horror movie because it's literally hell right why now. Is, this is 
where are they? Are they? Christian they're in a barn. Chenoweth's yeah, they're should... in Christian Chenoweth's barn. She lives on the outskirts. That's why she said, "Come to my place because it's secluded." And she just so has right, a you should you should find the best screen cap from this scene of the bar burning down, and then just write erotic thriller. Get ready yeah, for no, no, the goo. this this bit where yeah, she sticks it in and just goes erotic thriller. Uh, and then you're like, oh, finger banging's really changed since Jesus, I did it last. Since my day. <laughs> since my day, <laughs> finger banging's really changed. You know. Since my day of two years ago. Since my day in 2015, when this movie was made, it's really changed. <laughs> and then you know, I like that the kid joins in. Like you know, like he's like, no, I'm I'm over this. Like I hate movies. There are a few where there are kids. You know, even ones I like, like there's a movie called The Guest which this movie really reminded me of, that I think this movie, if under uh, a different sort of direction, could have reached the level of the guest, where the son, even though they know this person's bad, still don't want to hurt them, because they're like a father figure or something. I feel like it's great that this kid's like, no, mum was right, this guy's a nut job. Let's beat the shit out of him. Maybe the son is just is still... a car engine? Yes. Ah. Because Christian Chenoweth was working on cars and that's where it's Maybe the son is still really bummed by the fact that he was going to beat up the bully, but then Mm. he came out of nowhere and just destroyed him. I think the makeup was really good in that too. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Like, real good gore effects. It looks like like melted cheese coming out of his eye. Yeah, but I think it was good. Like, I like those practical kind of things. I I think it adds... And the fact that they couldn't... they they, You know, the the English uh, release of this edits out that. Oh yeah, like the, the, the trick is like too it's two seconds shorter because they edited that out. Oh, those two seconds were worth it though, weren't they, Grace? Oh, they were back it, in the Blu-ray. It kind of would have been good if like we had an after the credit scene of her, of her like explaining to her husband why all that happened. Yeah, and he's like sitting there going, uh, "Okay, I'm <gasps> done," mm. because uh, that's the thing. She never gets found out for having sex with him, mm. other than by Christian Chenoweth, which she tells. Died. Yeah. All of them that they die, and and if not, she just they never have any point of reference to know because he never said out loud, "I fucked your mum," mm. and she never said out loud, "I fucked Noah." So it's kind of like, well, in the end, she gets away with it, mm. which is neat. I presume, like on the in the police investigation that's gonna happen, mm. they they would look at his well, computer. Well, here was something I I thought of, right? You know, when you think of uh, this, okay, if I had to be honest. If they played the theme song from the movie, I mean, the theme song from the TV show Charmed mm. over this end sequence credit credits, I think you'd be like, oh, I just missed Charmed. <laughs> Dang. I don't the remember this. The music was pretty okay in this. Huh? The music was pretty all right. I think the music was really spot on. All right. Weren't you singing at one point, Grace? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was tapping my toes. Oh, I no, I think, I think, I, I thought this was a really good angle that they, that, you know, they could have gone with now. I don't know. It, it may be a controversial one. I think what lacks in this movie is her character. She's too much of an idiot. I would have actually liked for more of a cat and mouse game. This is why I think ten minutes would have added. I think what I would have liked is for you to explore the dark side of man by making her on a level, not the same level, go as morally duplicitous as he is. Mm-hmm. I thought. With the, will there be a moment in which the cops are going to get involved? And how can you explain away all of this and save your respectability, your integrity, and your career, maybe? And I thought, well, she could play this off. Now, you know, this is this is this would make this movie darker, but I reckon there's no way with the photos and the video, mm-hmm. you could play this off as she she could have said no. He raped me, and then he's a student at my school. I see him every day. He lives next door, and I was just too afraid to say anything. And then she could play that card later when she's pushed to the extreme. I thought, like, you could have that there to make her character a bit more, like, morally duplicitous, to say that she's kind of sunk into his level, to make it kind of a bit more darker and grim, to give it more of that, what we know as erotic thrillers, and make it less of a B grade and more into the level of A grade, where this is a real kind of cat and mouse game. I thought that would have been an interesting idea maybe. to have done, you know? what? I don't know how you guys feel about that. I, I agree with you, Ryan, but maybe the problem with that is that People just look. We'll, we'll, we'll be honest. People think that pedophilia is one of the worst things. Yeah. In that can happen. Maybe they just thought like I, I know he's of age, but 
Maybe they're just like, oh, she had sex with a student. That automatically makes her really bad. Maybe they went by that like kind of cheap. But with his... Yeah, which one? The what? beefcake is brawny, brawny male, male teacher. teacher. This is the well, best. See, I, I thought of that. I thought of that too, but here's the thing. He's got a history which Christian Chenoweth just typed up on her computer of violent tenden- tendencies. He's yeah. been expelled, he's had this this and this. He has a backlog of this type of behavior. So if she turned around and said, "Hey, he sexually assaulted me. He raped me, and I was too afraid to say anything. She and had that one line in the movie. Who would they believe between exactly? Two of us? And I really wanted her to follow up on that. And with Christian Chenoweth, the vice principal, as her friend, who also did not like this kid from the get go. No, she liked him. No, she stuff. said there's something wrong with this guy. No, she, she thought he was weird. Up with him. There's something up, but that indicates she doesn't like him. I wouldn't go so far as not like, but she was wary. No, but the, mm. yeah, but we know that that her character is not going to like him because of that one statement. Yeah, but so I that's don't... why I mean by she didn't like him because they all loved him. Mm. Yeah. I don't. She was I... the one that's like no, and in all fairness, there was no reason at that point to be like that anyway because he seemed pretty normal. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well, her reason was the classic thing. I just don't think that she would have gone so far as to put him on her shit list. Mm. Oh, I think so. From her character, I think so. She puts anyone on her shit list. There's no proof of her shit list. Jayla. Well, she doesn't like the father. We know that. She doesn't like the father. I mean, she like, doesn't. The she... father cheated. Like... Yeah, but like J Lo doesn't. She doesn't like the. She, she puts J. She shits all over J Lo in a good portion of the no, first she act doesn't. for being single. Still, she's like, no, come she on. Doesn't. Like when she stands up, when J Lo stands up for her rights as a woman to not have to sit there with a sexist guy, mm. she just casually is like, you know, hey, you know, she's. She's not usually this temperament. Like, I know, she's trying oh, to play yeah, it off as cool, but she's not defending her friend as much. She's kind of, like, pushing it under the bus a little bit. Mm. That's what I mean. Like, it's that... It, not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying that's what I get from Echo. That's what I personally get. But the movie has now ended, guys. The credits are rolling. You know, this movie evoked a lot of things from all of us. You know, Grace, obviously, more negative. Bartek, <laughs> I think you're the most level-headed one here. I think you, you, you enjoyed it. I personally loved this movie. I felt like it was a breath of fresh air. And I don't mean that the movies that we have been doing have been not a breath of fresh air. They all have, but this was just something out of left field. I also barely knew anything about it. I knew the concept, and I heard that it wasn't getting much appreciation, and I thought to myself, no, these movies have their place. So we're going to give our ratings and reviews. We'll go with uh, uh, Grace first, because, you know, I really want to he 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 what you have to say about the movie and you know do take into consideration all the stuff that we have just you know discussed through because you know at the first beginning of it you're like I fucking hated this but you have to admit there are things <laughs> I here I probably did come on a little bit strong like like I didn't hate watching it like it wasn't a slog to watch it like it was enjoyable in some way so I reckon I give it um four pumpkins out of 10 four that's that's not enough that's not enough <laughs> well too bad more like more 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 it's four hang on the characters and incidents portrayed are inspired by actual events names have been changed to protect the innocent and our events have been modified for dramatization so you're a terrible person <laughs> <laughs> that's not what that means so Bartek let's hear from you yeah you're right this movie look we do we do unappreciated masterpieces on the show mm-hmm. and a lot of the movies we do it's some are more obvious as to why they're not liked as mm. much as others. So, like, the movie we did last time, uh, Red Riding Hood, we liked it, obviously, but not many people did. And when we watched it, it was it was very clear why it wasn't, you know, like, the pacing mm-hmm. was questionable. We, we saw the merits of it, but, you know, mm. simple people, simple <laughs> thoughts. This one, you're right, it didn't Take have... That. Huh? Simple people, simple thoughts. Take that. Yeah. Well, I love that band. Take that. <laughs> take that. Jeez. Then put it aside. Watch the movie and put it aside again. <laughs> so this movie, it didn't have as many of those things. Like maybe some people, and I did certainly read that in things that I found, thought that it was more cliche storm, which I didn't really agree with. No. This movie had a lot of character relationships that were developed very well. Like... 
I wasn't as big on her as you guys, but Kristen Chenoweth, you said she was a very real character, and I mm. see, yeah, she was very real. Mm. And I can tell you, I don't know about you, Grace, if your parents have been divorced. Yes, uh, since I was 15. Yeah, for me it was 10. Well, they're separated. But you're only 14. You're only 14. I know, I can see into the future. Oh, no. What a great future. <laughs> I'm 23, so I see into the past. Um, <laughs> I know, it's weird. Yeah, so once you turn twenty three, you can't see forward. You can't see <laughs> backwards. Your life is practically over. So I will say that if if you want a film that explores uh, the concept of divorced parents, this film was it, it. Even though it was an erotic thriller, that's the label you can put on it. And even though it did have some very graphic things, the the representation of divorced parents trying to get back together and the child dealing with it. And that whole aspect there, which is not the primary aspect of the film, right there sells the film for you. Mm. And as for the primary aspect, which is the relationship between Noah and Claire, I should, the other way around, because Claire's the main yeah. character, um, thriller. Thriller. It was a thrilling film. It touched many people in many different ways. In many different places. Like, none of... <laughs> like, the three of us, we've touched on how hunky Noah kind of is. I found some things online of people having much more passionate thoughts about how he is. Mm. Um, and y you guys are right. Jennifer Lopez, I almost called her Lawrence. <laughs> I thought you were about to say Jennifer Love Hewitt. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've done there her on the show already. We've already done the tuxedo. Yeah, we've done the tuxedo. <laughs> My favourite X-Files episode. <laughs> so Jennifer Lopez is one of those celebrities that, like, <laughs> that I was aware of growing up, but I didn't really pay attention to. And What is what's so funny? I did fuck you. Your favourite X-Files episode. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bartek. I haven't watched X-Files, so just... Neither I didn't pay attention. I. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I could be right. <laughs> You don't know if I'm wrong. I'm sorry, Bart. I'm being incredibly rude. Don't worry. I'm when, not. When Ryan gives his review, we'll make jokes. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, Your review is a joke. Yeah, I wasn't really aware of Jennifer <laughs> Lopez growing up, but my stepbrother who lived with me for some time, he listened to that Jenny from the Block show a lot, so... Was it a show? Did I say show? I meant song. Yeah, I was like, uh, hello, I, don't, I didn't know she was Sorry, the Jenny. block The Block is a show, but Jenny <laughs> from The Block is not a show. Nor there is she on that show. There, the might be, there might be a Jenny who is from the TV show The Block. There's I have not watched The Block. Yes, so. I don't watch The Block either. There's have to have been several Jennies. And if sure. not, they had to play Jenny from The Block songs on the ads. Mm. Go Legally. On. Jenny from The Block on The Block. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I find that song a little nostalgic, and before I came here, I listened to it, I'm like, yeah. I remember this. <laughs> I got myself pumped with my listening. Not pumped, from... but I, no, no, I had an enjoyable pumped. nostalgia. You're good. Like yeah. So this movie, I I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'm going to give it the rating of one grape. <laughs> <laughs> one delicious grape is all you need to have all a All you need time. is grapes. So I'm going to do my review, Bartek. I'm going to read the reviews that we have from IMDb after that, and Bartek's going to share something he brought, and then I'm going to share something very special after that. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Well, so you did that last time, Grace. This Mom. is a magical movie. I really appreciate the fact that it is a movie that is self-aware. No, not self-aware. It's self-reflexive. It is to the point in which... See, there's a difference because some things come across as self-aware and it kind of is too meta and stuff like this. But this knows what it is. It knows the conventions. And when I hear the words cliched, I... You know, you hear negative things, but there's reasons why these certain types of conventions, these certain types of archetypes are there. There's reasons why there are these only these amount of genres. There's reasons why, because they work. They work. Ah, oh, like the X-Files, huh? <laughs> the X-Files does explore different genres. Yes, you're right. And this is a movie that really touches the heart as well as the erotic muscle, the brain. Oh, my favourite episode, Pinky the Brain. You know what? There is an episode of Pinky and the Brain in which uh, Ryan, uh, was it Guzman? Guzman, yeah. Is a uh, Bruce Campbell type, yeah. So... So this movie, I would say check it out, definitely. I think it's getting poorer reviews than it, than it needs to. 
we do call an unappreciated masterpiece, but there is the distinction. Look, we're not saying that this is, you know, the next Os- that it should have got the Oscar. There are movies on this show that we have said that about, or performances, but this movie is a good time. It is a good time. Get some friends together. Get some popcorn. Have a wonderful time. Be thrilled. Be be scared. Be be, thrilled. be be erotic with each other. That's not you know, what I said. And, uh, <laughs> I said it. You know that Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence Lopez was nominated for worst actress for this movie. Well, that's wrong. Did she win? No. She There's lost, a reason. She lost to Dakota. What's her face from Fanning? No, from Fifty Johnson. Shades of Grey. Johnson, Johnson, yeah. Johnson. There's another Dakota? She's the one from Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, really? Yeah. So, don't check out Fifty Shades. F- check out The Boy Next Door. I think that it really yeah, handles... Fifty Shades of The Boy Next Door. Fifty Shades of The Boy Next Door. I think it handles the tones correctly, where it pushes the envelope, Tony but doesn't Russell's break right? it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think of you. So, <laughs> so, if I had to give it a rating... <laughs> If I had to give it a rating, I would give it, I would give it my joy over Grace's contempt. <laughs> divided by. Divided by Bart's. Which ha- one's deeper? My joy. Oh, okay. It's over her contempt. So I've got reviews here from IMDb. Now I've started off with a negative one. I like to inc- include positive and negatives because there are two sides of the coin, like the, this episode. The shade and the light. The shade and the light. And I'm the one where you like you flip the coin, but it and it on lands its side. on its side, <laughs> and then it snows in Japan. Yeah. Although I liked it, so I shouldn't be in the middle. So, this first one is from 2015. Obviously, I mean, it would be really surprising if there was one from 2008. Well, there are um, only two, there are only two years they could be from, Ryan. Maybe. Um, it's a one star. It's called if. If it's supposed to be bad, this boy is brilliant. Okay. <laughs> Might I add, before I start, the best title one, I did not include because the review was boring, but it was like the trash next door. I really <laughs> like that one a lot. But this is a one-star review. Now, it may contain spoilers, so be careful. Oh, no. Opens with two characters chatting like it's halfway through, and you better pay attention. Jennifer Lopez is married or separated from a pol- from a polite <laughs> che- che- what? <laughs> a polite what? Cheating husband. Okay. And her son is going on a weekend trip with dad. You know what? He dot, is dot, a- dot 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 dot. He, he, he like is actually polite. Different. What was that? Makes it sound like the the husband and the dad are different people. Yeah, but with <laughs> with a cheating with is uh, uh, her son is going on a weekend trip with the dad. And what's really important is J Lo's Claire Peterson will be alone for a few days. Well, that's all it takes for for a perfect looking twenty year old named Noah to become more smitten with his neighbor than Glenn Close was with Michael Douglas or anyone else in the triest to stalker genre. In the what? Triest. What is that? I guess it's one who tries to be a stalker but fails. Like three something, three people something. Playing out like a straight to video throwaway, the boy next door has every cliche in the book, or in this case, leaflet. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yet, yet it's a ter- yet it's a terrific film to laugh at, exhibiting howling camp value as Noah's transformation from friendly alpha male bonding with Claire's passive son, flirtatious model undressing near an open window, steamy bedroom partner into a vicious psychopath happens before Lopez has time to blink, or the audience can finish half their popcorn. And while his attraction is believable, since she lo- oh yes, while his attraction is believable, since she looks good enough to lust after, the blinding fascination from email hacking to picture pasting to break tampering to kidnapping is completely far fetched, deleting any suspenseful development that could have made boy a better more realistic film but where's the fun in that and yes it is that bad 
Thank goodness. Like I'm really confused because it seems like they really liked it, but they gave it a one star. <laughs> I like that this person wants um, truth and believability from their erotic <laughs> They want They want truth for their erection, damn it. <laughs> So the next one is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven star review from 2015, obviously. Mm. Um, it's another one with spoilers. Flawed but incredibly suspenseful film. Okay. Mm. Although there are a couple of problems with this film, I thought it was quite a bit better than the average rating here. Let's start with the problems. The biggest problem of all is Christian Chenoweth as the <gasps> vice principal. Fuck you! This may be the most totally ridiculous casting I have ever seen in a film. The auto accident segment, though fairly brief, is also illogical. And the way the administrators of the school handle the slightly odd situations, and then the photos and videos of sex is just not realistic at all. And I say that as a retired principal. Ah. On the positive side of things is the casting of Ryan uh, Guzman. We're going to say Guzman. Okay, go ahead. Guzman as the sexual predator slash student slash neighbor. In this role, Guzman is spooky. (laughs) And I mean spooky. Spooky! Spooky! Great portrayal of psychological disorder. Perhaps schizophrenia. I'm never quite sure of the acting ability of Jennifer Lopez. I always feel she is just competent. And sort of feel that way here. Let's just say she does fairly well here. Ian Nelson as the son is quite good here. John Corbett is fine as the father. I think the plot is quite well constructed. A very mature high school student is actually a violent predator, and his next target is his next door neighbor and teacher. The question isn't where the film is going, that's rather obvious. The question is how will how will B yes, this is great. The question is how will B get there? <laughs> how, how will B get there? And how will the situation be resolved? <laughs> That's two questions. Um despite the problems I discussed already, this is a very suspenseful film. If you like this sort of thing, recommended. Now the next one is a nine star. Jesus. Yeah, this person really liked it. Awesome facial expressions. Of lead cast is the title. <laughs> yeah? Yep, for okay. this. Oh, God. Grace, prepare yourself. Oh. This is how it starts. It, it's written from France. I just thought that, that would be a little flavour because it doesn't have any spoilers. It, is it from a believable year? 2015. Okay. <clears throat> One of the two, correct. Hello. Hey. <laughs> that's how they that's start. Title, no, that's how they start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they start with this is awesome facial expressions of lead cast. Hello, hey, I just want to say that I don't agree with the critics on the performance of JLo and Ryan. They both nailed the show with awesome performance and facial expressions. Especially, I like the way Noah turned into something different in the second half of the movie. He totally did justice to the role of a psychopath. I may not be convinced of the end, but the performance and a sense of thrill was successfully portrayed by the director. Even the role played by Lopez's best friend was also appreciating. What I wanted the end was the, that the writer should have made some work in order to bring that the Noah, I love they wrote the Noah, <laughs> towards happy and content life. <laughs> oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Cadet life, instead of killing him at the end, because the one whom he loved was able to change his mentality with love and care. Aww. So, he wanted them to get together. I don't feel like this person knows how to move. No, I think he wanted a happy ending. And last one here, guys. Okay. Eight stars from 2016. Oh, you know what what, what he probably meant? An ending like the guy from Red Riding Hood who didn't get with her. Yeah. He became a hero. Yeah. So... (laughs) Eight stars. This one's called Sex, Lies, and Video Files. Okay. Claire Peterson, after a problematic marriage, is feeling vulnerable and looking for something new. She needs to hear from man, in brackets. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, wait, in brackets, not husband. Oh. 
something she already knew looking <laughs> something she already knew looking in mirror <laughs> that too wait something she already knew looking in mirror that she, that 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 she worths <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Not worth or worth spelled E S but S Worths That she worths Husband cheats her for <laughs> Yeah Husband cheats her in brackets first time when was when he married her <laughs> uh, you should have just written Am I right at the end? <laughs> Like, that was more... Like, he, he could have done it beforehand, but in case you want to know. Beautiful and attractive woman is alone at home. Sexual... <laughs> whoa. Sexual heat between her and younger neighbor. And she makes no mistake having sex with this boy. This was result of mistake. <laughs> Sorry, could you read that again? Okay. Okay. Sexual heat between her and younger boy... Younger and younger neighbor. And she makes no mistake... Having sex with this boy. Okay. Next sentence. This was a result of mistake. <laughs> when she when she married. After sex, she feels guilt because somehow she knew being taped. <laughs> so it's, she somehow knew that, Grace. <laughs> oh my god. She offends boys' pride. <laughs> <laughs> Grace's face is of anger. <laughs> it's not anger. It's just it's, a wilderness. Uh, wilderness and anger, because like she offends boys' pride, and after this we have plot. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great line. They're not wrong. <laughs> after that we have a plot. I Yay. like that line a lot. As a revenge, her email is hacked. Noah, spelt with no H, boy, tries to embarrass her. I could criticize Jennifer Lo- Lopez, but she has bigger picture. I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, the mirror. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I could criticize Jennifer Lopez, but she has, and she and he puts this in quotations, bigger picture. <laughs> she knows what she's doing and where she's going. This dynamic movie is a oh, okay. small part of J-Lo puzzle. Okay. <laughs> I, I get... <laughs> I get what right, he's saying. That should have been the title. And that's it. I get what he's, he's saying that she has a plan and this was part of her yeah, plan. Yeah, she has, but she has a bigger picture. She knows what she's doing and where yeah. she's going. This dyna- dynamic movie is a small part oh, of J-Lo puzzle. puzzle. No, no, not of the, just of J-Lo puzzle. You know, J-Lo puzzle. <laughs> so, oh. Bartek, that was the last one. I thought that one you would really like. That I read was... it and I just read um, my favourite, which was the bit where it's just like... Um, looking in mirror that she she worths just who knows what that means but Bartek uh, like, you got some interesting things tell us what you got yes yeah, so on this show once upon a time I used to read out quiz questions because like, yeah four I, episodes ago yeah I try it every week and I just cannot find some this one unfortunately boy next door is such a common phrase that there were questions <laughs> that there were quizzes for like girls asking like oh who's your hot guy or whatever who lives near you <laughs> yeah L- literally one of the ones I took was like who is your boy next door and it was just one question that was literally the question the three answers were like <laughs> three common names like Jack Ray and stuff like that I'm like <laughs> fuck that yeah. so I couldn't find quiz questions I'm like Ryan's gonna read IMDB what can I bring Roger Ebert's dead yeah, he's so dead. I can't find an Ebert Our review. antagonist is finally dead at his this web, point. His website does have some lady reviewing. Ah, uh, who cares opinion. about her opinion? Yeah, so I'm like, well, wh- wh- what else can I do? This Metacritic, Rotten Tomatoes, YouTube comments, and I eventually said, let's go to YouTube comments. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, what are people saying? Always a wise because, one. No, but, but if you think about it, they're real people. Yeah, they're real trolls. When you're writing a review... When Nothing can convince me of When you're writing a review, <laughs> you have to, you know, put in so much detail. Here, you just have to give reactions or your feelings. Oh, go back. So I'm, I want to read a couple that I found. This one has no commas. <clears throat> Good. <laughs> Good movie, except the sexting part. I was like, give me holy water! <laughs> Your delivery of that was very good. Then I stared laughing during the end because the guy that Jennifer Lopez killed, she smashed him and it was so funny. That was funny. And there was a response to this comment. Um, hashtag classic too. 
<laughs> People know what I want. Oh my god, yes, keep going. Another one. Um, the storyline to this movie had me very intrigued and curious. Dot, 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 dot. Not even halfway through the movie, let's say, let's say 17 something minutes into it, they are already undressing. Well, JLo is and going at dot, 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 dot. I thought it could have had a bit more cat and mouse before hitting the pooch, you know? I'm sorry, that sentence ends with three exclamation marks. I should have shouted that. <clears throat> After that night, Toy Boy goes from being charming to hella psycho in like 0.5 seconds, dot, 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 dot. This movie really gets your feeling and nerves stirred really quickly. Dot, dot, dot. Right. Overall, it's a decent movie to watch! <laughs> to watch? Was it capitals? No, yeah. but three exclamation marks. <clears throat> three. To watch. Here's a short one with a response. I wouldn't tell Noah to stop, smiley face. Response. <laughs> really? You wouldn't tell Noah to stop? I would, because that's just cruel. <laughs> what? No punctuation, just... Oh, sorry, there's an apostrophe in wooden. Oh, yeah. is there more? And that's... Yeah, a couple more. Oh, go on, go on. <clears throat> oh, my God. YouTube's insane. <laughs> right, here we go. She crazy! Noah, she... fine ASF. Smiley face, smiley face. As... As... No, no, as fuck, fine. I think. ASF? Uh, yes. As, as as fuck, I think. That oh, means. oh. All right. Res- there's a space between the now, S and the S. Yes, but there's a response. No, there's no space. What? There's a, It's just ASF. Hmm. There's a response to this one, so I'll read it again. She crazy. Noah, fine. ASF. Smiley face, smiley face. Response. Hi, this is Rocky. It's my <laughs> plus nine. Li- it's a phone number. What's up, Skype? I am op- number, please. Response. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Response is no. Just no. <laughs> yep, correct. I like how someone went, I've got no luck on OK Cupid, no luck on J Day. Let me try out the YouTube comments. That'll that that'll bring some. I just love the fact that they replied. I know. No. <laughs> they replied. Hold on, no. this is No. This is one of my favourite ones now. There's a bunch of replies. <clears throat> Noah, he's just Dot 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 dot. Mamma mia! Hot, <laughs> hot, hot, hot is spelled H A W T. So each hot. One, yep, and each one ends with multiple exclamation marks. <laughs> Mamma mia! But it gets better. Response. Noah is so cruel. He isn't no Mamma mia. He isn't no Mamma mia. He ain't no Mamma mia. Oh my god. Response to that. He is digesting in this movie. <laughs> he is digesting. How do they know? I think they meant disgusting. No, no, no. He's digesting something. He's digesting. Something. He's good looks. And one last response to that one. That Noah is desperate. He tried to act all incident, but this time he is super desperate. <laughs> Three more. Oh, God. These no, are... no, I'm going <laughs> to. No, I don't. Gonna... None of these have responses. Oh, yeah, that makes it better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Feel the burn. That Noah is one desperate. He tried to act. Oh, hold on. You read. Oh, sorry. That one has a response. Yeah. Oh Christ. I know, right? I'd be very nervous and shaking if a younger man tried this with me. I'd definitely beg him to stop and would get away. I don't know if I could handle it. Dot dot dot. Don't know. <laughs> That's it. Another person just said, "It is very sexy." <laughs> sexy. A little bit of five. It's it's sexy. great because Grace, you are New Zealand. I am New Zealand. So that's how you say sexy over there, yeah? I don't have an accent. How many times have we been through this? I think you do. I actually did catch myself accidentally slipping into the accent. There you go. I so you don't liar. have an accent. You're liar. Guys, one last one. And we cannot deny that this person is telling the truth. I can try. I love this move. Noah had sex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good point. Now, I found something very special. Yep. On IMDb. We have not had a movie with an interesting discussion board, and I don't mean reviewing board, the actual discussion one. We had one back in the day, I can't remember what movie now, where was it was like, Starsky and Hutch? where it's like, my grand, my uncle's truck is in this movie. Oh, oh well, that was the, the tuxedo. The tuxedo, again, oh, X-Files. That. This one <laughs> caught my eye. Now, I didn't look on it a purpose, I was scrolling down and I just saw this title. A thought on the black bikini... Lace panties. I had thoughts on this as well. Good. Let's see what theirs was. If she wasn't planning on a sexual encounter, why did she then wear ah. the... Wait, wait. Yep. Excuse me. We'll let the audience... We'll let everyone who responds go. Let the internet speak. Wait. 
then why did she wear the black lace panties and bra? Or did she always dress like that? Seems out of place for a wholesome school teacher. You're an idiot. Can I, can I rebut now? <laughs> Go on. Okay, so she was on a date beforehand. Correct? Okay, good. Yep. Yep. So she was on a date beforehand. So, like, you wear, you wear like, nice lingerie on a date. Yeah, that's good. But let's hear what other people have to say. Mm. This is the next person. <clears throat> Possibly because at 46, she still has a rockin' hot bod. If I had a bod like that, I'd show it off whenever possible. What, and he does in his what, <laughs> what woman over the age of 45 could resist? <laughs> I know she works really hard at keeping that famous booty taut. And yeah, <laughs> that's what they wrote. Jesus. And yeah, this was a loser movie, but I've seen her in a few others where she was great. So don't knock JLo because you're jealous. She is one hardworking woman and she's got my respect. And then in brackets, a 61 year old hardworking woman who'd love to have the energy to keep looking that good. So, so we've just. <laughs> We've just found a fan of the movie. Found a fan of, of the J-Lo movie. Is- no, of the movie Monster in Law. Yeah, and then this person, rep- these two people, reply to that comment. Uh, the OP was inquiring about Claire, not Jennifer. And oh, then this, wow. per- and then the person just replied. The next one just replied a thumbs up. <laughs> and then, then it goes on. I thought of that too. I think it's because before she went over Noah's house, she was out on a date with Vicky and those two older beep. They wrote beep. Uh, before she realised... Yeah, those we, two older fucks? Self-censorship. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or pricks. And uh, before she realised who he was, she was probably prepared for a good night, lol. But then the date didn't work out. She went home, had a glass of wine, and then Noah called her to come over. <clears throat> Why do men think that lingerie is just for them? It's not. She had just had a date that night, and yeah, maybe she was preparing for the possibility of hooking up with her date, but the main reason would simply be to feel sexy and confident, and it had nothing to do with Noah. And... You mock, but I agree. And wait, and you think a school teacher doesn't get to have sex? You're an idiot. And then someone oh, wow. literally replied to that comment and just wrote, probably the best thing ever. Exactly. Like, we are only interested in what you think of us. Lesbians dress sexy also. <laughs> what? <laughs> Lesbians dress sexy also. Okay. And then, the, and then <clears throat> someone needed an education. Women can wear anything they want at any time, and newsflash, bras and panties are job-related, nor are they activity-specific. Twist it if you think what you said is okay. And then the last one, I love it! <laughs> the movie, the movie was okay. <laughs> like, they loved it. It was okay. <laughs> Yeah. I loved it. It was okay because it is the same old thriller. And then they have like a little boy emoji, a little girl emoji, and then a broken love heart emoji. <laughs> and then they just have peace and love. They just write peace and love. We should copy and paste that to like every single discussion. <laughs> so that's it. The boy next door. Lesbians can look sexy too, you know. They they don't need no heteronormativity to keep them down. So, you guys have been fantastic, wonderful, amazing listening to people. Grace, even though you were being a bit condescending towards the movie, I'll allow it. You, you can get a pass. You were a great guest, as always. You saw different angles in the movies. You, you saw the more negative angles. But the thing is, seeing the negatives can reinforce the positives. And, you know, you really reinforce the positives. You saw angles, we saw angels. (laughs) (laughs) That was probably the best one you did. That was very good. So, you guys, as I said, great. Bartek, it's always been a pleasure. I'm really glad that you brought some material of your own and that you always keep trying to find these quizzes. Now, you guys can help us out, you know. If you want to recommend a movie, you can. We have a Facebook page, Spit and Polish Presents, in which we have a link there in which you can suggest movies because, hey, 
we may not have done this movie. We may have not done many of the movies or any of them. Unless the, we, just, we only did them because I, I know them or Bartek knows them. But hey, what happens if there's one that you know would be perfect and we just don't know about its existence or we just didn't think about it? You could help us out with that. Um, other than that, you know, you guys keep on being great people, you know, enjoy this, uh, these podcasts, you know, it's October while we do this, so enjoy, you know, whatever's happening in your spooky October fest, (laughs) um, oh no, um, as always, you guys have been great, and remember to be kind to each other. And now, the end of the episode. Hmm. Let's do Who Wants to Be Millionaire? Okay. All right, everyone. Ryan, you're up to question 15. You haven't used any of your lifelines yet. Okay. Still got all three. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. 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 All right. You get ready yeah. for the question? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Between the Eastern Army and the Western Army, who won the Battle of Sekigahara? Was oh, it A, East, B, West, C, North, D, South? You got all three lifelines. Oh, jeez. Jinkies. Wow. Oh, scary. Ah, uh, northwest, east, south. Oh, uh, ah. Yes, between can I Can I phone a friend? Yes, you can, of course. I want to phone my good friend, uh, Grace Brown. Okay. She's a real expert on directions. <laughs> um, I would really like to talk to her. All right. <laughs> her number? You, you have a number? Yeah, she's on the phone right oh, now. Right, okay, ring her for me. She's there. She's oh, on the line. Hello, Grace. Grace, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on. Who wants to be a millionaire? Oh, wait, and I've got this. I've got this. Oh yeah, thanks. I've got this really great question about directions. That I thought oh, you know only you only. Oh yeah, I, quickly. We've only got a few few oh, seconds. Okay, okay. So so who who won the war between the east and the west? Was it east, south, west, or north? Or which one? Which direction? It was a special war. Was the war, Eddie? Uh, the Battle of Sekigahara. Sekigahara. Quick, 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 quick. Well, if it was the battle between the east and the west, I don't think it was north or south, so I'm going to go with east. Quick. All right. Uh, do you have an answer? You want to use the lifeline or what? <laughs> oh, I'm going to go with what Grace said. East. The east? East. East, Timor. Yeah, east. East. Lock it in, Nettie. Yeah, it was east. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> da, da, it actually da, was da, east. Da, da, da. <laughs> you actually got it. It was the east of the army with yes. Iyasu Tokugawa. He, he win. He won. He won. He win. You want a million dollars, right? Yay! Um, now stick around for a current affair. Yeah, you can, we'll give you some extra money because you didn't use 50-50 or you know, ask the audience, but yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Of course, none of this is real. This is just a podcast. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really into it, Grace, But fun Grace fact. Fun fact to end this all on. Grace does know directions. To the heart. To the heart. Just to let you know, if you picked 50-50, I would have said east and south. Thank you. (laughs) You're crazy.